from Samson. Like it? I appreciate you making the time. No doubt. I think uh, I've heard you in a couple other interviews, and like, it really is funny how small the list is when you do go to list out your top five favorite producers, beat makers of all time. How many people end up saying the same ones? But you're always on it, so you've had like a huge influence in appreciate in my life. And like, just to kind of set the scene for everybody, um, aside from the fact of being a hip hop head. Uh, my best friend moved out to Hawaii. You two ended up linking up when you were out there working on some music and, and just taking a vacation. And then mutual connection, we made it happen. So, um, But I also, I guess jumping into it, I did know that uh, I heard in one interview you t kind of talking about being like a, a gatekeeper to hip hop. And um, or maybe someone I else I wouldn't that. say that. I would say to the, to the style of, um, of hip hop that I do, definitely. Um, a lot of people don't like the word gatekeeper, but it just is what it is. Like between the radio show and my albums, like I introduce so many artists to the world and that's just part of what I do. Um, you know, I'm proud of it, but you know, from Mac Miller to Joey Badass to Action Bronson to Freddie Gibbs to Griselda to the list goes on and on and on and on. And, um, you know, it's a big part of the brand. Yeah. And I mean... Even if it is to your style of hip hop, it is kind of to hip hop because uh, we let the corporations get too out of hand with everything. Next yeah. thing you know, it's not even that thing anymore. And uh, but no, I, I do kind of think of you as almost like the Joe Rogan of hip hop. I mean, are you familiar <laughs> with with like what he's doing? Uh, I mean, I know he does the podcast. I know I know a lot about him, but um, I mean, shit, you've been on Shade Four Five for what, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen years, 16 years yeah. and all these people got their first shot, like coming on your show. Mm -hmm. You are giving light to a lot of people that I call some of my favorites now. Um, and th is it weird having that kind of influence on the game? Nah, it's what I signed up for. Um, you know, when the mixtape game died, my radio show became my mixtape every week. You know, so it was like. It's just part of the evolution of what I'm doing. Yeah. How would you, like when the mix mixtape thing did die, how did you actually decide to maneuver out of it? Like where, where was your head at during that time? It was just like a switch went off. It was like, it's over. I remember the day, the day it happened, man, seeing, forget if it was on the internet or I got a text or something about drama and Cannon get arrested. And it was like, that was it. I was like, I was kind of waiting on it because yeah. people were getting, I was getting away with murder, man. Like... <laughs> The shit that mixtape DJs were doing. As far as like sampling and, and copyright nah, nah, shit? Or? Like the shit we were doing, like I was doing, I was putting mixtapes on iTunes that I didn't own or produce anything <laughs> on. Like just like, we were wilding, bro. Like DJs were making a lot of money and the industry knew and finally they were just like, fuck this. So the day that happened, I was like, I got to start taking my beats like a million times more serious and mm -hmm. put out albums, you know? That was the... Only certain people survive that, you know, drama, Khaled. Um, you know, Khaled was never really a mixtape DJ. He, he had them here and there, but he, that was around the time that the albums, you know. Yeah. There was only a couple people that really did it. Tony Touch. I mean, Tony Touch is like the blueprint for all of us, but um, a lot of DJs just fell off, especially the fake DJs. Like, there were so many mixtape DJs that weren't actual, like, real-life DJs, and mm -hmm. they all just disappeared. And then, um, you know, if you... The hustlers survived, and a lot of people just faded away. Was there money in it? In the mixtape game, like it was when crazy when you're bro. yeah, and the algorithms didn't catch on yet, right? You print a CD, you know the 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 dupe. I don't want to snitch on myself. I mean, this is so long ago; it don't even <laughs> yeah, matter. Yeah. Um, you'd you'd make CDs, and they'd be about fifty cents each, mm -hmm. and you'd sell them to certain stores for eight dollars a pop. And, and you're I'm touching about these all stores. that, yeah, man. There was no middleman, like. There were certain mixtape distributors, but... It was drug deal one-on-one -on -one then. Yeah. No, nah, literally, <laughs> yeah, I knew yeah, drug yeah. dealers that were moving mixtapes. Like, yeah, they yeah. would go oh, pick up CDs. Look at that profit margin, the, yeah. 50 cents to $8. It was crazy, man. Like, I remember me and um, me and Big Mike, right at the end of the game, I had the Jay-Z Nas um, Black Republicans record, and nobody else had it. And um, I, I was like, Mike, it's time. Let's go. And we put it we, we put it on the mixtape. And just off that song, we filled the whole mixtape with exclusives. Just yeah. off the fact that we had that Jay-Z Nas. Like, I call labels and be like, I'd have dudes risking their jobs giving me exclusives that they weren't even supposed to give me yet. Because of contracts? 
or just, whatever. Yeah, shit yeah, that yeah, wasn't yeah. out. It was all exclusives. And I remember that we dropped the tape, and then within one hour, um, like within one hour, we moved ten thousand CDs and just like Harlem damn. and like Manhattan. Physical, right? Yeah, crazy, yeah, damn, crazy. And then, like, huge monetary hit when it turned to streaming, though, right? I mean, so then you kind of need to take yeah, your Yeah, streaming was later. That was, like, way after the game died. Yeah. There wasn't even streaming when mixtapes were still a thing. When I say mixtapes, I'm talking about physical yeah, CDs. Yeah, yeah, That you go on Canal Street and 14th Street. In the trunk, in a bodega. I, f- I think it was January 2007 when uh, Drama got hit, and it was, like, over that second. I called Clinton Sparks and he owned uh, MixUnit.com. Mm-hmm. He was a part owner. Yeah. And I called him and I'm like, yo, so what's going to happen with MixUnit? And he's like, what's that? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Like, the feds were probably literally listening. Like, it was that serious. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Damn. Like, it was real. Damn. It's talking about millions of dollars being made every year by DJs that were just basically bootlegging music. But we were also the, the A&R to the streets. We were breaking records and controlling you know a lot what was going on and what people were trying to put on their albums and it became to the point where like people would have like these big records on their albums and the street records they give to the mixtape djs and ended up flipping to the point where like the mixtape djs controlled it so much that they started going back to the raw records on the album and look where where we're at now is like people don't make albums the way they did in the early 2000s yeah we're in a better place I think so. And I think right now is actually like a really good time. Yeah, it's not cookie cutter no more. I mean, the major label stuff is what it is, but there's a lot of great music being made right now and no rules. Yeah. It it's it sounds so strikingly similar to the weed game in, in <laughs> states where it gets legalized and everything like that. Yeah. So how is it when uh, I've heard you talk about actually like making beats and then going to put together an album. And I, I think I heard you in a conversation talking about that song with... Uh, Gary Clark Jr., Nas, and Joey Badass, and like trying to put that together. But kind of when you were talking to people, it hadn't actually been solidified on any side yet. Like you were well, kind of man. This is what happened, it. man. Like obviously, COVID came and fucked up the game. But mm-hmm. um, I basically was signing the Mass Appeal for my new album, and uh, I was in LA for the Grammys. Uh, I ended up going to like link up at Sweet Chick with Nas. And I knew Joey was, like, I think Joey was staying with Puff or something. I text Joey. I'm like, yo, going to meet with Nas right now. Pull up. So we ended up sitting down and talking about doing this record that I wanted to be the first single on my album. Like, it meant a lot to me signing to Nas and then having, you know, Joey's my little brother. And it's just like putting that together. That was a collab that a lot of people wanted to hear for a long time. So, you know, we we sat down. I was very clear. I was like, bro, like, this record's happening, but, like, this needs to be my record. not Because, you know, obviously... Joey wanted Nas on his album or vice versa. But I was like, nah, this record's like important to me for my first. This is my moment mm-hmm. I need, uh, you know. So it was solidified that moment. And then, you know, the next day Kobe passed away. Things just started happening, man. And like, it, feel, it feels like the world ended right there. And um, fast forward six, seven months later, I finally got the record done. I had, you know, it's a lot of going back and forth, but we wanted to sit down in the studio and really make a record. We didn't get to do that. Just because so, of COVID and just being... Yeah, like, like, actually, shout out to Q-Tip, man. I went to Q-Tip's crib uh, right after that meeting, and I had two beats that I wanted to have the Joey Nas record on, and I was, like, trying to decide, and Tip was like, he chose the one that ended up coming out. And it's a different version, too, because we replayed the whole sample and all that. So the version that came out is, like, you know, it's a real piece of music. There's no sample in there. It's like, um, you know, it's different than the original idea. But um, fast forward, Nas, you know, Joey came through. We actually did it in person. Joey came through the studio and did his parts, and I explained how Nas is going to come after him and go back and forth or whatever. And then we sent it to Nas, and it got done. And, hey, put I put my foot on the gas for the rest of the album, and we got it done. But making an album during the fucking pandemic is no joke. Yeah. And even before the pandemic, how much of the music that you make is like the both of the artists or whoever is the artist on the track are actually in the studio with Probably you? Probably 50-50. It depends. 50, 50. Yeah, it's been... Would you prefer in person? I always. Yeah. yeah. You put you take on like a coaching like director role at times? That's what producing is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, is it odd sometimes working with people that got these... I mean, you've been at it for so long at this point, but... I don't work with people that I don't vibe with. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to... I don't care how big an artist is, like, none of that. It's like, if, if we're not going to just be on the same page in the studio, I'm all set. Yeah. Was it always like that for you? Or was yeah. there, like, a time you needed to kind of put your foot down about it? 
because you nah, realized the work. It was suffered. pretty. I mean, you know, d- d- during the first couple albums, it was like figuring out how funny some of these dudes can be. To, even to this day, but now I, I see it coming before it happens. But um, you know, it, when you're working with homies, like when it's just people you genuinely, you know, enjoy being around, it's a whole different thing. So for sure, it's not work then. So what what was the first thing that inspired the the move from Boston? I just feel like I hit my glass ceiling. I was already going yeah. to New York like twice a week, but I hit my glass ceiling up there. It was like I wanted to do certain things that I just couldn't do in Boston. Did gurus, like just knowing his story beforehand, have any influence on the way that you even like thought about that? Or was it just the facts of the facts, music nah, popping in New York? Guru never made a name for himself in Boston. Like he went to school in Florida, then moved back to Boston, then moved to Brooklyn on some like, I'm Pretty going quick. here to make it. I had already had, you know, a name in New York and... Doing, I was already doing my thing, and I was actually DJing for Guru at the time I moved to to New York. So, um, you know, he used to. We used to have a lot of, you know, com- the last time I seen Guru live, man, he was like, "Yo, I just, you know, I'm not." He kind of said along the lines, "I'm not supposed to be talking to you because of the weirdness with Primo and Solar and all that shit." Like me and Primo, you know, that's my big brother, yeah. and me and Guru were like that <clears> at one time, but Solar is just a bugged out dude and fucked all that shit up. So at that point. You know, Solar and him kind of had an understanding that it was like, that's the other side. So we seen him one time in a show. This is the last time I ever seen him. And he looked at me and Q-Tip and just kept moving. And like Tip known him for over 20 years. And Tip was like, bro, what the fuck is going on? And uh, Guru was just, you know, in another... Is that just because his loyalty to him from the beginning, you think? Or? Nah, Solar's new. He came in way later. He's hmm. He came in like on some... Man, I got. I want to be careful what I say because yeah, yeah. I don't want to. Just out of respect for Guru's for name, sure. but um, let's just say that Guru's mind was, you know, he he was very uh, paranoid about certain things. So he basically, my point is, the story happened. He was like, you know, I'm not really supposed to be talking to you, but I want to let you know, bro. I'm proud of you, man. You moved to New York from Boston, like me, and blah blah blah, and like you did it. He's like, I don't know anyone else that did it like that. And that's what he left with, left me with, and uh, he passed on, you know, a year or two later. But it's just, you know, I wish things went a lot different. He died from cancer, man. Yeah. A lot, I don't think everybody knows that. Um, I just wish towards the end things could have been cleaned up, you know? Yeah. How do you feel about when someone um, passes and then their acapellas of, of stuff gets thrown on a track? Do you kind of feel like if they had a real relationship with the person that's putting it on the track, yeah. then if, if if they were in the room and... and I mean, if anyone's going to do it, it's fine for Primo to do it. Oh, that's, for that's, sure, for that's sure. Yeah. But I've never really done that. The only person I ever did that to was um, on my last album, uh, yeah. the Sean Price record. Oh, yeah. I actually recorded that verse, but it wasn't on my beat originally. And I put, like, you know, I got permission from the family or whatever and used it, but... um. I've never done that with someone that passed away's vocals. Like, all my songs are real. Like, I got real songs with Sean Price. No made up shit. My man Smoke <laughs> yeah. Dizzy said that. Yep. Like, I got real songs. Oh, he, I'm sorry. He said I got real songs with Nip. No made up shit. I got a couple of real records with Nipsey too. Do you? Yeah. Um, like, I, I've never faked the funk with that shit. Like, a lot of people, you know, remix things and all that. I got real records with all these dudes. Yeah. Obviously, I never got to work with Big or Pun or any of that. But I don't make no fake, you know. I actually did make a fake Biggie record, but it was because no one ever heard the verse, and there was a whole thing about it. Mr. C called me like, I really need to know where you got that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, as far as, like, putting out real records, it's yeah. all real shit. Yeah, if there's a connection. So, I mean, that's... It's, it's, it's crazy to think how many... I mean, I'm sure you've got to develop some pretty intense relationships with the people you work with. They start turning into friends, brothers, etc. Yeah. And then especially within hip hop, so many people have been passing. I mean, and then now it's kind of weird. Some of the more recent ones, it just seems like it's a little bit too young for a, a human male or whatever in America. Yeah. Like how it's do scary, you scary man, like getting older and just thinking about how know, old are you? I'm turning forty in January. Damn, you look good, man. You look like <laughs> I, 40. I gotta, hey thanks, man. I gotta you know, I'm definitely I think about health every day, so I'm gonna start hitting the gym more and all that, but it's scary, man. You know, I think Sean was 43 when he passed. Prodigy around the same age. Like, And these were like my... It's hard to make albums for me now because my go-tos were always Mac Miller, Prodigy, Sean Price. Like, that was my... Prodigy lived next door to me. Like, Sean was at my crib three times a week, man. Like, these are like, you know, 
forget about rap. Like these are cl- like really close friends. It's just nonstop. One of my good friends now got just found out he got cancer. He had an operation yesterday. It's like the shit is scary out here. So you got to make it count while you're here. You know. For sure. Yeah. Time's gonna fly regardless. Mm-hmm. So you better be doing something that you love. I mean, how's how's coping with that? Do you kind of feel like you're the type of person that just goes head down and goes into work, or you take some time for yourself and kind of zen out? I, I ain't got no time for myself, man. It's, when I'm not with my daughter, like, just focused on her, I'm working and trying to pay the bills, man. Shit is no, no joke out here. Yeah. My overhead right now is, like, monthly is, like, more than some of my friends make a year. Is it's just, bananas. Like, it, what is it from? I pay my mom's rent, her food. Yeah. I got my my baby mom's rent and child support. I got fucking studio, the crib. I just moved. I just upgraded big time, and it's it's not cheap, man. So, this you know you got to just manifest it and work and get it. You always kind of believed in manifestation. Absolutely. From the day I started DJing, I was like, "This is what I'm gonna do." Because like, what you were like starting to get into it like 2004 and started to take it serious around six, seven. What? Like when you started to take DJ in series? No, 95, no? bro. 95? Yeah, you 10 years off. 95. Okay. I, I was on the radio in 96. I heard you in an interview say something about like t- the 2004, 2006. Well, that's when I started taking beat series. Okay. But I was DJing since I was 13 yeah. years old. You like, think it's necessary to start DJing before you start making beats or either no, or? No, I think, I mean, it definitely helps. All the great producers mm-hmm. ever were DJing DJs first. first from yeah. Dre to Primo, Pete Rock, you know, everybody. Um, but yeah, I, I, st- I started radio in 96. I was 14 years old on the radio. I've been literally doing it every week since. And then, um, yeah, when I, that, I know what you're talking about. That's yeah, what, yeah. When I talk about the beats, it was like I started getting placements on like KRS One, Foxy Brown, yep, AZ. Yep. And then um, when the drama shit happened in 2007, that's when I was like, nah, I got to like really lock in and get this right. Yeah. It was kind of like the tipping point for you as far as. Yeah. Yeah. For a lot of people. Yeah. And then. Um, I th- I think I heard you made some comment about like there being even Grammy nominated records that didn't get the sample cleared. So kind of I feel like I heard you because I listen to basically any interview over ten minutes I could find with you, right. and I and I think I heard you say something to the effect of like for new cats coming out making beats, producing like cross the bridge about sampling when it comes make the oh, song. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So sampling you, is hip hop. I I don't even honor those conversations when people are like, "Oh, that's sampling's played out." Like, beat it, dude. You don't understand what you you don't even understand the genre you're working in. No, it's a hundred hundred percent. If you make some dope shit without sampling, good for you. But yeah. it's the backbone. To all Wait, this so shit. how did the ba- bouncing act was primarily not sampled, right? Um, was I, I used to say that to protect it. Now nah, this, <laughs> this sample's on there. There's a lot okay. of samples. <laughs> okay, yeah. There yeah, is yeah. a lot of sample free records. Yeah. But for the most part, it's all. So know. do you ever just have like you must have such a network? Do you ever just have like some of the jazz homies you know, people that play yeah. instruments or whatever, just kind of like freestyle it or play all their the act or whatever, and then yeah, take man. that? Not yeah. so much on that album, but um, like the what goes around that whole album has, you know, horn solos on every song. Yeah. Live bass, um, live piano, all that. Yeah. And do you this play? This new album I'm working on now this is my 10th album. It's going to be um, very, very jazzy. I'm going back to the, what it's it's like what goes around, but even grimy. Like, I'm, it's dirty. Yeah. Yeah. You ever, um, uh, they're not laid out, it might be in there. Heard of uh, No Made Orchestra? I was album picking one day, and, and uh, I saw this one. It's not over here, it's over there. But, um, New Age Jazz, and I, I was just blown away by them. But, um, yeah, check it out. Yeah, so will you have people come into the studio and just play, or are you normally yeah. taking cuts from them? Absolutely. No, I don't. When, whenever I have live musicians, they, they get on the record after I already made it. So, like, that's all post production stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, must be a little bit nuts for you looking back on how everything is gone. But, I mean, for the people that are just coming up, was there a time when you first started to realize, like, oh, okay, this is actually, this, I wanted this to be the thing, but clearly this is about to be the thing now, and it's getting serious and interacting with people, or did you just kind of... I just took it that serious from day one. Yeah. And the, the one thing I tell kids and, like, people coming up, is like, if you don't stop, you're going to win. Mm-hmm. Like, that, I don't know anyone that just kept going and lost. I don't know one single person, but I know a whole lot of people that stopped doing it and fell off. Yeah. But if you just keep at, and that's anything in life, like, mm-hmm. 
you, no matter what you want to be, it's like if you stick to it and don't stop, mm-hmm. you're not going to lose. You might you might fail, you know, a hundred times getting there, but that's part of life. You ever are you religious or not? Nah, I'm I'm finding my uh, my faith as I get older though. Like it's not to some god sitting on a yeah, cloud. Yeah. It's like the universe, and I think God is inside everybody because they literally can manifest and put certain energy out there to, to live the life they want. It's just they got to believe it and really make it happen. So yeah. I'm finding that later. Like every night I go to bed, I, I you know kind of say like a little. That's huge. Not a prayer, but like a thank you. you yeah. Know? It's almost like for me, the nights that I do it out loud impeccably the Absolutely. next day is always better. You got to man. I mean, even Nipsey said, right? Spoke some things into the universe and they appeared. I and did that my whole life. I literally yeah. would say, like, I, I've been in situations where I was like, yo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign a Rock Nation or this and that. And I did it all. Like, from even the conversation to signing the Mass Appeal or Duck Down and all these things through the years, I put it all in the universe and told my like close friends like this is what I'm gonna do and to this day the, there isn't one thing that hasn't happened will not you, one single thing will you write down your goals I don't do that but um, no. I've, I have done it and it just doesn't have the same effect as when I actually like just re- like talk about it out loud yeah say it out loud for sure I respect the writing down the goals through I know I have friends that do it for sure I yeah. bought a board for the studio and like it's probably the same writing from like three years ago so what did it happen? No, what's funny is everything. I mean, on the, it's a crazy past. Everything on the list years, happened, so, but like yeah. none of it's out yet. That's the funniest thing. Maybe it's like in my situation. Maybe it's bad luck. Does that frustrate you a little bit? I, I know one of the things that says two chains album. That's been done, man. We're yeah. waiting on it to come out, but it's not out yet. It's done. Mm-hmm. Joey's album's written. Joey's album. You know, going on four. It's been over four years since he dropped an album. Maybe I need to erase the board and some of this stuff will come out. Yeah, maybe I, that's I know it. I got, um, shout out to Nems. I got a, his name on there and that shit's still not out. There's like everything written on the board is not out and it's been sitting there for a long time. So maybe I should throw that board in the trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Erase it, put some new names it. on it. Yeah. yeah. Does it Is it a little bit like annoying when you've had a project done for a year, two Bro, years? Bro, there's two Chains albums like six years now. That six? Since it became, not, oh, there's a lot of new songs yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. But like this songs on it, they're six years old. That mm-hmm. People have no clue. Um, and that's been the most frustrating thing in my career so far. Like What's sitting on these incredible records. That, that so I was told it's coming top of the year. So let's see. Okay. But um, yeah, this has definitely been the most aggravating. He knows it too. Yeah. Like I'm talking about, we've flown around the world working on this album, and every time I get told like it's about to come out, I don't. So <laughs> I think um. He's in a good place now to drop this, especially with the temperature of hip hop, like the way he's collabing with, you know, West Side and Conway and all these guys. And it's all coming full circle. So it is what it is. And when, when people see the guest list on this shit, it's going to blow people's minds. For a 2 Chains album? Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Like, we're, we're going to the Grammys with this. Damn. Hell yeah. I mean, I'll cheers to that. Yeah, cheers. Let's go. Man. Might as well manifest that too. Yeah. Um. I didn't get a chance to listen all the way through West Side's new the B the B side B roll. Yeah, I mean, it just came out last night. Yeah, but um, I love what they're doing for hip hop too. Oh, before I forget though, the only reason why I asked you if you were religious is because you know how you hear a quote over and over and over, but then like the thousand and one time it'll actually finally make sense. Yeah, I, one of my favorite quotes the past few years is uh. God doesn't call the qualify, he qualifies the call. I'm not religious either. I'm with you on like the universal and spiritual stuff, but just meaning like you you don't get grace out of nowhere. You got to be working towards something in order to nothing, achieve nothing's it. Nothing's supposed to come easy, man. It's, it is what it is. Like I get aggravated sometimes. I had a very rough uh, personal year where dealing with lawyers and just figuring out where my daughter's going to go to school mm-hmm. and all this shit. And you know what? When I calmed down and just let things happen, I ended up, you know, I'm not happy about all the money I'm dishing out, but besides that, I won, man. Like she goes to school in my neighborhood. Her mom moved back to the city. Like I got I got my time with my daughter, and that's all I give a fuck about in the whole galaxy. So but when I when I when I don't have her, I'm working and I'm I have a million great projects coming out, but that like my best project's my daughter. So you gotta just stay calm and let the universe do what it's gonna do. How did having her change the way you work? I mean before her, it was like my life was 100% hip-hop. Like mm-hmm. Whether I was doing my radio show or producing or touring, 
It was just nonstop from the minute I woke up in the morning to when I went to bed. It was just work and hip hop. Like it, was, it just was what it was. And then when I, she was the balance. When I had her, it was like, nah. Now it's, you know, she definitely saved my life in a couple of ways. But that was like, I lived to like. I, the number one thing on my mind is the next time I get to pick her up and have her for, you know, the amount of days I have her and all that. It's just like, it's my everything. And the quality time now is different too. So it's just, that's, it's the meaning of life to me. Cause you mm -hmm. know, if, you know, I, I believe that I've changed the world for whether it's the smallest ways for certain people. I've heard testimonials, every person's here to do what they're going to do. But the fact that you can raise a child to really, you know, save people's lives and change the world in a better way is amazing. And everybody can do that. But, you know, I think my daughter is, uh, she's special, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird. Some of like the dopest women I've ran into over the past five years, independent, cool, everything. They don't want to have children. But all the same reasons why they do not want to have children happen to fall into the bucket of why I do want to have children, which is the world's kind of a fucked up place yeah. now. And we can't let all these slobs keep recreating like there needs to be some yeah. good influences in here. But you feel like she kind of put other areas not related to her in your life in check, too, like just by needing to refocus in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just I, you know, I grew up a single uh, single. I grew up an only child and um under like, uh, uh, well, uh you know i was i was basically between my two parents houses until uh the end of high school but um and then you tapered off with your father nah i um you know i moved out before i even graduated high school i had my own apartment moved to downtown boston like but um my point of saying that is i never mm -hmm. really got to be around a girl like besides girlfriends like mm -hmm. I, so now i have this baby girl that i'm like Watching her go through losing her first teeth and this and that and dealing with, you know, it's been an adventure because it's all these elements and things that I never was around my whole life. I never mm -hmm. had like, you know, even my like cousins that are girls are kind of like tomboys a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was Your always. Your daughter's not? Nah, my daughter's not a tomboy <laughs> at all. She's not at all. She's very, uh, she's very girly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, just. Being around it and learning all these new things, it's a whole new ride, man. Like, mm -hmm. you think you you think you know a lot about life until you have a baby, and you're like, damn, you know, my parents didn't tell me about this. My parents didn't, you know. It's cool, man. It's been a, it's been a ride, and it's going to keep going. She's only six, so a lot on the menu. There's a lot coming up. You, and you really do do your best when you are when you got her for the day to, like, basically cut off connection. She got 100% of my attention, man. I, yeah. I cut off the... Thank God for my amazing uh, management, man. Shout out to my man Brian, Mike, and the whole Rock Nation team. Like, they, they handle all the stuff I used to handle, like, just I had to. Now, like, they handle it, and they give me a call. It's a quick call, yes or no, and they, they do their thing, man. So I'm blessed to have a good team. And um, But, yeah, when I'm with her, it's like... Good dad gang all day. Mm -hmm. Daddy daughter day used to be like once a week, you know, when I had her, when, when when I was with her mother. Like we'd have one day where we did daddy daughter day and that was it. Now it's like three three days a week and it's, it's the best. And it's always the same three days, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, we move the schedule a little bit a little here bit. and there. Yeah. And I'm sure the winter is going to be different. Like, you know, I think I got it on Halloween and then we change. It's all different, but... As long as I get my, my half a week with my kid, I'm good, man. Yeah. So she's sick. So what ca do you have any rules as as far as like what kind of music do you allow her to listen to up until now? Or it's just... She's not really into... She's not like no? into hip hop. No. She's into music. Yeah, she yeah, loves yeah, Michael yeah. Jackson. She loves... Um, oh, hell yeah. Anderson Pack. She loves... Yeah. Um, I shout out on Pack. <laughs> she loves Bobby Caldwell. And, you know, she got her own... She got her own little like pop stuff she likes here and there. But she's really into... She's an old soul. Yeah. So what about you outside of hip hop? What what's in your playlist? Um, when I'm I'm like I do I work so much with music that like in the crib like I just listen to like Erica Badu and like Maxwell and just I I smooth it out when I'm in the crib but I don't really listen to music because I'm DJing every day so it's like the only time I really get to listen to music is when I'm like you know and shaving or like like. You know, yeah, yeah. otherwise I'm running and I'm around music so much. I'm in the club every night. It is what it is. But I don't sit there and go, oh, I'm going to put this on. Like, it don't really happen like that. You got certain people, though, that like if they're like, yo, you got to listen to this. 
that you'll peep it. That's no. me, bro. I'm the, I'm the one that's putting on everybody. You know who puts, <laughs> the only person to really put me on anything in the last couple of years is Questlove put me on a couple of things. Yeah. Uh, we were out in Ohio at Dave Chappelle's and that was like an adventure in itself, man. That really saved my year last year. Like, you know, yeah. obviously everybody had a rough year, but when things really hit the fan for me, like the end of summer last year, I just went out to Ohio a couple of times and like escaped the world. You take the mushrooms with them? Nah, I did not. <laughs> um, I've been there and done that. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Nah, going out there, like Dave has, he basically like has this Compound, whole town. Right? Yeah. And it was just such a, such a ride, man. Shout out to Dave and his whole team. Um, yeah. But yeah. But, uh, Joey puts me on the thing sometimes. Joey's like always got his ear to, he definitely put me on a few artists. But yeah. besides that, no one really puts me on a shit because I'm always ahead of the groove of the period. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then, I mean, do, is there genres that while you're shaving or while you're relaxing or whatever that's not hip hop that you put on? Or, or does it tend to just be it's the R&B main thing? jazz. I listen to a lot of jazz. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Erica Badu, that I'm not. It's probably sold out. But that West Side Gun Quest Love mm. Erica Badu show, yeah, I was I'm trying to hit that. That looked amazing. Good. Yeah, I mean that might. I'm, who knows when the next time you'll be able to actually go see Erica Badu is. I've actually seen her like 20 times. Yeah, she's incredible. Is it weird going from? I mean, you've always been in the grind and and putting on these people on the radio and et cetera. But is it weird once you start coming in to contact with them, like? And then almost Not really. There's only been a couple times that I was like, I wouldn't even use the word starstruck, but like, there's been a couple times where it was like, damn, like, yeah, it's rare, yeah. Because, but you know, you get to a point and it's like, it's just mutual admiration and shit. But like, obviously yeah, yeah, with Erica, yeah. she DM'd me and I was like, oh my god, I've met her a couple <laughs> times, but it was never. I don't think she really knew who I was the times I met her mm-hmm. until she finally DM'd me and she's like, yo, your shit's dope. She's like, damn. send me some beats, and I was like. All right, cool. I'm about to go on stage. This is the most Erica Badu thing ever. I go, I'm about to go on stage right now, but I'll send you some later tonight. And she goes, all right, play for me your nutsack. Like, that's so Erica Damn. Badu. So shout out to Erica, man. Oh, um, yeah. She's incredible. She actually took a record I did for West Side Gun, and she added her own drums and posted it on her Instagram. Really? Like, just did, took it upon herself to do that. Yeah, I got to go check that. Uh, shout out to Erica, man. Yeah, that's uh, she's one of my favorite. I mean, you got a, a daughter. I don't even know what that's like yet, but I do have a a younger sister from a, my dad's second marriage, and she could be my daughter. So there is. It's just uh, I got to spend like eight months in the house with her. She otherwise she kind of like an only child, right. and like every day this album was on, and we were just that's listening. Cool. She knows every. I was gonna take her to that show, but she got like pre calc five oh. to seven p.m. now. So yeah, see, I'm yeah. the opposite. I have a. I have a half sister on my dad's side, but she's like 26 years older than me, so she was oh, never really, really. Yeah, yeah. I barely knew her until later on. Yeah, yeah. It was weird. I didn't really. My dad and I butt heads super hard growing up, but then once I realized that she was coming into the picture, I got a brother too. I was kind of like, I can't allow the three most influential men in this girl's life to be at odds with each other. <laughs> So if it wasn't for her, I would never have tried to start fixing the relationship with my father and I, you know, yeah. like she is definitely the reason why I'm, I'm better in a ton of different ways. It's generational, man. It's weird. Like, I don't understand how these older dudes, like my father included, I don't understand how you could just be so distant with your kids, man. Like, I just don't get it. Like, especially having my daughter, it's like never in a million years would I go you know, a month without seeing her ever. Mm-hmm. And that that's even insane for me to say that. I don't go four days, five days. But the fact that, like, man, some of these older dudes just, like, don't... They look at things different. I think it's the mm-hmm. way they were raised or something. But I just think now I'm watching this new generation of dads and they're so much close. All my friends are, like, you know, best friends with their kids. And obviously we have... Like your friends your age, right? Yeah, yeah like, yeah. We, we have a... a different opportunity to do that because of the the path we chose and like Mm -hmm. thank god i don't work a nine to five i I worked my ass off for it it wasn't given to me but the fact that i can make my own schedule and be with my kid every day is like that's very special because i do have you know some friends that work nine to fives and they they see their kids in the morning and then for like two hours at night and that's it yeah like that shit would be and then the kid's young and someone else is raising them at daycare fuck that i'm with like i'm with my even dropping her at school now like breaks my heart but i'm there when she gets out of school and i'm there till she goes to sleep like i'm not 
I just don't understand the, the the dads that leave their kids or like don't. Some of these dudes don't even talk to their own children. It's insanity. No. Well, I mean, like, there's zero vulnerability that existed once you go to our parents and then you go yeah. to, especially to theirs. And when you talk about their parents, you're talking World War Two shit. You know, like, it was j definitely a different time. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of feel like with my father, I'm changing the family mold. Like, it'll be the first time that, like, a son has actually had a relationship with the father. And there was a point in time I didn't even hug the man, you know? And now, now it's, I love you every time, trying to spend That's a good, lot of man. time together. Yeah. I mean, how many times do you need to watch a movie, hear a song, or do whatever, and see people talking about, like, on their deathbed, oh, I wish we did this, this, well, I mean, like, I don't come live on. like that, though. No, I, I take advantage now. every moment. Yeah, yeah. And I've tried with my dad, too. Like, we're not we're not that close. But if it wasn't for my daughter, we probably wouldn't even... Like, I, I make sure he talks to her once in a while. And um, Still in Boston? Just, uh, yeah, he, he lives area. in New Hampshire, yeah. yeah. But it's like, I'm not going to force you to be involved in my life, you know? Like, yeah. I, you know, it's funny, because he'll be, like, out getting his oil changed or something, like, People will see his last name and literally be like, "You related to Static?" Oh, and he'll shit. be like, "Like he gets it." Yeah. And this is the same dude that used to be like, "Yo, it's a fad." You know, rap's mm. not going to be around. All that. My mother's the opposite. She always supported it. Yes, I moved sir. her to Brooklyn. <laughs> I moved her yeah, to Brooklyn yeah. at seventy-one years old. Like, who the hell does Damn. that? But um, you know, it is what it is. I just, I just can't ever imagine life being like that where I'm not involved with my uh, with my kid like that. Yeah, it's like with parents, you got to accept the. Good for the good and kind of expect some of the shitty shit to happen. Yeah, man. You, uh, you like Egypt? Like the whole like Egypt mythology stuff? You pay attention to any of that? Some of it, yeah. There's this story where I, I always like fuck it up, but it's basically like this dude and his arch nemesis go to fight. And right, good guy, bad guy, Cain and Abel like story. And uh, the, the good guy, his father's already dead. So he goes, he battles his arch nemesis. He wins, but he loses an eye in the battle. And then he takes his eye... And he goes down into the underworld and he gives it to his father. And in giving his father's eye, the father is able to walk around back on the regular like planet again and come out of the underworld. Kind of this whole story of like, there's shit. you're supposed to be better than your father. So am I. We're, we're the next generation. We should be smarter and whatever. So there are things that are always going to piss us off about them. That's another thing, But we though, should be better. That's you know? another thing is like, I feel like certain generations get mad when their kids outshine them and that's crazy because I yeah. want my kid to outshine me in every way possible. Yeah. It's missed opportunity on their part. It's, it's whack. I mean, sometimes they see we're like father looking at son like we're so alike. I see where we are alike and I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did. So me shitting all over your dreams is a way for that's me crazy, to try bro. to bulletproof that's me from sure fucking up. But insane. we are different people, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like that there is some good fuck you energy that helped you kind of I've been doing it my fun. whole life. I've been yeah. proving people wrong and just not because that's my thing. It's yeah, just yeah, something yeah. I did. It's there. I was the kid in school, people telling me, you know, you can't do that. Like, that's not your thing. Like, why are you, like, you're wasting your time. Like, I've had other DJs and producers be like, yo, you're not doing that right. You know, this kids that thought they were, you know, the illest who are washing dishes now and I'm fucking, mm -hmm. you know, just living the this shit that we love from day one. I just took it serious the whole time. Yeah, what was it like for you in high school? You went, you were from Lawrence originally. So I just yeah, lived I grew up in Malden. Medellin, and oh, okay. my grandparents lived in Lawrence. It's, you know, it's all Greater Lawrence area. But um, mm -hmm. my, you know, I'd be at my grandmother's house almost every day after school. So I, I you know, when I say I, I, I was born in Lawrence, and when I when I say I grew up there, it was more like, um, you know, I was at my grandparents' house almost daily, and then mm -hmm. I went on when I first started DJing. I DJed a lot of parties in Lawrence. But um, anyway, when my when when I was ten, my parents got divorced. I moved to New Hampshire, which was like thirty minutes away, and um, I went to high school in Exeter, which is where Phillips Academy is. P, uh, you know, very mm -hmm. while I was going, to, I was going to high school in the town. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, like you know, middle class to lower yeah, middle yeah. class. But when I first started getting on, everybody thought I went to Phillips, which was at, it was like fifty thousand dollars a semester or something like. I don't come from any money, so it's just hilarious when I hear that. And um, but anyway, this is how I finessed it. Mark Zuckerberg was going there at the time. Uh, John Forte went there. He just graduated. Like all these people were going there, right? And um, they had a radio station, and this is a high school. It's a prep school, mm -hmm. but you know they had a radio station there, and four people a semester get to get a show from the town that didn't go to school there. It was like they figured they were giving back to the town or some shit. 
or whatever. They just felt like giving that four hours, uh, four hours a semester four per, per week, four different shows mm-hmm. had to be from the town, like the locals. So every semester I would write an essay on why I need to have a radio show. This is, I'm at 14 years old doing this. And I got it every time. So I was on the radio from like 94 to like 97. Wait, 94, I'm bugging, I'm sorry. Um, 96 to like 98. Who's, um, who's bringing you to the studio at this time? I would just go over there. Yeah. Shout out to my man Tiger and Dave. Okay. They were doing the shows there before me. So I would go there and be like, what is this? Mm-hmm. So I started doing radio there, and I started finessing it, man. Like, I would call record labels every day after school. My phone bill would be like $1,000. Because back then, if you yeah, made yeah, long-distance yeah, yeah. calls, it was crazy. <laughs> and I would have to pay it back somehow. My mom would beat my ass. And I used to call, like, I would just, you know, go buy records and look at the back of it and look up, and I think, 411 or whatever. I would call and get the numbers and call. And just, I was wilding, man. I was literally, like, 15 years old calling... Uh, the Riz's office, like, yeah, can I talk to Robert Diggs? And they put me on the fucking phone with him. Damn. Like crazy. And I was getting all these records sent to my house, like my house was the radio station. Yeah. Like I was finessing it from day one. And after that, you know, I graduated high school, moved to Boston, and then I started DJing on Emerson Radio. I didn't go there either, but mm-hmm. I was on there like almost once a week on like Friday nights or shout out to all the DJs back then that would let me do guest mixes. Started interning at 197 while I was going to college. Oh, you started interning? Yeah. Okay. No, Emerson, I was DJing, like, yeah, doing yeah. my mix. But then I started interning at uh, Hunt 97 in Boston under uh, Chuck Dog and Chubby Chubb and Clinton Sparks and all these guys. I know Clinton. And I was just, um, <clears throat> Clinton would end up, Clinton and Chubb used to let me fill in for them when they were out of town. So, you know, it got to the point where I was on at 5 o'clock on a Wednesday, the, the drive time, doing a mix show. And um, then I think Chubb, yeah, Chubb went on tour with Khalees. And he was gone for months, and I did the, I did the show every day at five o'clock and on the weekend. So I was like, the, I was on the radio more than anybody in Boston at one point. Mm-hmm. And um, he got back off tour, and he was like, "All right, I'm back. You know, I'll let you rock on the weekend sometimes." But I was like, "Wait, that's it? Like, I'm like, I'm getting the fuck out of here." And you're how old at this time? Twenty one. Yeah. And I owned a record store at the time and a marketing company, so I was yeah. like nonstop with it. Yeah, doing Reebok, G Unit, Def Jam, Atlantic, Interscope. Capital Virgin, like I was killing it, and um, I was just like, nah, I'm out. I literally within one week decided to move to New York, move to the Bronx. Shout out my man Doug, one of my, like one of my uh, best friends from high school, junior high school. He um, he lived in the Bronx, going to Manhattan College, and he let me stay on his couch for a month. I got an apartment in that building, and just hit the ground running, man. What um for like someone that has a similar interest to you, what are you telling them for today's day and age as far as what to go after? Because I feel like we're not that different in age, right? But the simple eight years that separates us is literally in a lot of ways the death of like mainstream radio, right? Like by the time I was always all about the radio, trying to get on the radio. I even got raided and kicked out of UMass and got back in and on the radio. But even then, I know that radio station. Uh, 91.1 WMUA. Yeah, if you see any of the more, more recent podcast episodes, it's Jizza saying what up to me. And I, I made fake backstage passes. And <laughs> I hired seven interns to work for me for the college radio show. And we put it on SoundCloud because they weren't running the algorithms yet. Yeah. So we could put the entire show on SoundCloud tag all the artists make it an international show and actually get a little bit more reach out of it but what are you telling someone now because like back then do you think if the getting on a radio spot where it's kind of like this glorification i'm going to be able to share something dope that like not everyone gets to see you know i get to go on the radio to do that and then in today's day and age it's almost like you need to groom your own audience from the beginning because getting on the radio or getting on a radio station that is going to let you have any artistic freedom is it's a different world, man. It's like nothing. So where are you going to tell them to start? I don't even know how to approach it from a from yeah. a younger. Like I would have to put myself in a younger person's shoes and and look at what matters now. Mm-hmm. But I do think about all the time how there's a lack of younger generations doing this. Like even if you look at the radio stations here in New York or Shade 45, like I look at it, I'm like one of the youngest DJs on Shade 45 and I'm pushing 40, so. Right now? You're yeah. Be, oh, damn. I'm trying to think if there's anybody even younger than me. Hmm. 
there might be like one or two people. I, th- I, don't, I think Trackstar might be a year or two younger than me. I don't know. But everybody else is way older than me. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah. I think the closest one to me in age besides that is maybe Who Kid, and he's he probably yeah, got yeah. seven years on yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Primo got like 16 years on me. Tony Touch got 20 years. Like all these people are way older than me. And then we need more kids trying to do radio. Like even when I look at Hot 97, Power 105, there's a couple younger cats, but... Even I look at like DJ Self is one of the youngest, and I feel like he's pretty much my age too. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely want to see more kids come up with that, um, you know, aspiring to do yeah, that. Yeah. I just don't know where radio is going to be in I mean, 10 years. This was my answer because. Yeah, podcast, the internet. It's just. The nice thing about the college show was I had the freedom. So yeah. I, I edited all my own music. I still definitely, yeah. like, if that was internet, if that was a. I used to look forward to that. Like, oh, I loved making clean versions, all that. Like, yeah, yeah. that was how I came up. But it's like now, it's like, I don't know if college radio is ever going to matter again. No disrespect. I appreciate every college DJ out there. Yeah. That's how I came up. But I don't know. I remember when it mattered, like, labels were spending money trying to get records on college radio. I mean, yeah, because you got, if it pops off in a college, those kids are about to go everywhere. But I feel like those kids ain't listening to college radio station, though. They're listening That's the to thing. Them. It's what's the investment on the universities then to actually make this a big I deal. I mean, FM radio don't really matter either anymore. It's, you know, if you look at the last... So so then what? We got Siri? We got sat- nah, even satellite. Know, satellite. Here's the yeah. thing, bro. What's the last artist, right, mm-hmm. that blew up because of radio? Radio, radio. I, I mean, it's been a long time. Man. I haven't Pe- listened. I don't listen to the radio. Even the blogs yeah. are kind of a thing of the past. Like I remember mm-hmm. when, yeah, if yeah. you were on Rap Radar and Two Dope Boys, a lot of artists blew up off Two Dope Boys. Shout out to them. Mm-hmm. But even that now, it's like playlists are important. I think word of mouth will always be, you know, one of the most special things. But there's always a new. Like I remember, if you didn't get your record played on Hot ninety seven in New York, like you weren't popping. Yeah, that shit don't even matter no more. Mac Miller never gave, gave a fuck about that. Freddie mm-hmm. Gibbs don't give a fuck about that. Like, even like the young cats now, like Corday, and like they don't give a fuck about that, bro. It's like if you get a hit record, cool, you get your Shazams up if it's on the radio, whatever. But that's not how artists are breaking through. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think you know, I'm not gonna act like my radio show is any more important than anybody else's but the thing about my radio show is it's a it's a very specific taste and it's mm-hmm. curated and the fans know where to go to hear <clears> that new shit that, that that vibe there's I mean, nothing else like that it is important shout out to peter rosenberg i know he, he got his show uh, on sundays he does his thing with that but even with that sorry peter a lot of these artists bro are coming to my show before like it's it's the first destination man mm-hmm. I, I watch it and, um, you know, we have millions of listeners, too, more than any yeah. FM station. Joe Rogan or the rap. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, though, yeah, I'm not yeah. breaking no hit records. That's not what we do. I'm breaking artists and introducing people to the world. I mean, and we're talking culture. Yeah. We're not, yeah. I ain't, all that pop shit is for the birds. That ain't hip hop to me. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more with you. And I mean. And they go on to make hits. Mm-hmm. But like, you're going to hit Chance the Rapper first on my show. Then he can go on and do the hits. Yeah. Do his thing. You're going to hear, you know. Joey, before he does the hits, you're going to hear Action before he does TV. You're going to hear Gibbs before he, you know, get, goes to the Grammys. It's what we do. Well, since the radio is, like, where it's at right now, I mean, do you see, like, with you, it's very clear, right? There are artists that do an album with you. When you pull up, there, when you go to their part of iTunes or whatever it is, their name won't pull up your album with them. It's their name with Static the right, Selected, right? right? Yeah. So how important is it for some of these younger new cats to like, maybe it's not with Static, but maybe it's just with someone who got the juice and go in together, right? Like, I, I it's amazing to yeah. me that more producers don't get their name front and center a lot of the times. because yeah, I don't have the, 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 the leverage. So That's ha- the thing. I didn't always have the leverage. So how'd you get it? I earned it. Hard yeah. to earn, man. Mm-hmm. I earned it. And, I, you know, I... A lot of producers produce whole albums and don't get their names put on it. That's yeah. on, you know, to each his own. But I, I'm mm. like, nah, if we're doing this, it's a 50-50 thing. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work like that. You know, like with a 2 chains, that shit's going to be on Def Jam. It's going to be a 2 chains album. I produce mm. the whole album. I'm definitely going to get the notoriety and all that, even if my name's not next to him. I'm not signed to Def Jam. He signed to Def Jam. That's yeah. how that's going to come out. Cool. But if it's an indie project or... Most of the time when I do that, it's, you know, an artist that a lot of people aren't familiar with anyway. Like, when me and Action did Well Done, no one knew who Action was. He, did, he had, like, 300 followers when we did that album. Same thing when me and Gibbs did a project or when me... And then for the older generation that understands what I'm bringing to the table, like a Bun B or a, you know... Um, 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, they yeah. they do it out of respect. Bun, yeah. Bun could be like, nah, that's my album. You produce it, cool. I'm gonna make sure you get paid. But nah, that's my album. He yeah. he understands what I'm bringing to the table from a creative standpoint, and these are actual my records. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What what's that one with Styles P? The funeral? Um, uh, fu- is it funeral song? Or? Funeral season with Bun. Funeral and, uh, season. Yo, you added some hit like boys on that. You add yeah. You like, added. See, some... I had hip boy in my shit, and what that was 2012 when I made that record. Yeah. Come on, man. What are we talking about? Who the fuck had Hit Boy on the album rapping? I'll I'll wait for that one. (laughs) But you added some like deep ass horns to Bum B's verse specifically. Shout to Cats who played that. Yeah, I mean, so are you like? Listen, there, there's a new rapper that you like a lot. He's on the come up. Is you think the best way to go is independent for as long as you can? Yeah, I I wouldn't. I would never sign to a major. Not Mm. in 2021. I wouldn't sign to a major in 2017. It's it's not it doesn't make sense to me. And then what are you telling them as like a monetary route? What's the best way to kind of get your merch right, get your torrent, get mm-hmm. right management, right agent? I mean, it's not it's not that hard to do out here. It's just there's so many people doing it. Yeah. If you have your own lane and you have your own sound, you'll be good. You just gotta focus, man. Don't get caught up with the bullshit. There's a lot of distractions out here. So then going to the social media look, I heard the um, you ever heard listen to the Black Keys? Yeah, I heard them in a podcast and they really broke down the music industry, but they were just saying how, you know, at face value, when you're talking about labels, you have one of the dopest artists you ever heard, but they never really worked on their social media presence. And then you got somebody that has it maybe isn't that great, but it's got, you know, a 20, 30,000 person following half of which is probably fake. But they're gonna get People invested. Still do in. that. <laughs> I'm sure they do. Yeah, I mean, what's your opinion on that? I mean, I'm sure it's the exact same opinion that I got, but I, I need, I'd like people to hear you say it because you know the fact of the matter is, is the social proof. And when you have, if you got seven thousand followers, your ability to get from seven to fifteen is far easier than your ability to get from zero to eight thousand. You know, the simple fact that people come to your page and see that there's already 7,000 there. And then you have this landscape now of people with, that's Instagram. That's most of the social medias. It's a bunch of, it's a bunch of fake views, fake following. I mean, fake views, I don't even know how they add up when it comes to Bro, streaming. But I looked at, like, lately I've been watching my, my uh, the followers and shit. And it's so touchy. It's weird. Like, I don't know if, you know, I think everybody at some point has some kind of uh, robot followers. It just happens. But not, you know, the percentage is what matters. Um, But I just watch it. And it's like, you could say one little thing, if you voice your opinion, and like, it'll drop a thousand followers. It's crazy. I've been watching it lately. And it's, uh, I wish I didn't know that. (laughs) What's something that you said, though? I mean, anytime you talk politics or like, like, I remember during, you know, last year, just, going in on Trump and shit and watching every time I did I lose mad followers and I don't care by the way like fuck you if you're unfollowing me because of that you yeah. probably got other issues but um it's just interesting watching it and then you get some people that get mad triggered and like it's just social media is just bugged bro I wish I didn't have to have it but I do have to have it I mean you're a father now so I think the biggest influence you could play is making is being a good role model to your daughter because you notice, like, you look at, like, a younger person's social media, they aren't even anything to write home about. They're not nothing special or anything like that. The simple fact that they're in their early 20s, mm. 300 likes, uh, for, I mean, the r- average fuck, random man? picture. I, I want to raise my kid, like, appreciating yeah. life and living, like, real life. Put the phone down. So did you watch that, uh, The if Social she's, Dilemma? She's already, nah, I need to watch it. Yeah, it's good. She's already addicted to the phone, though. Like she's she? On, she plays Roblox all day. Yeah. And she, like, it's, I don't know, I got to start cutting it off. Yeah. Even though Roblox isn't social media, but it's like, there's there's pluses, there's advantages, and there's, it's you know, time here, losses, you know? yeah. Yeah. But she she's learning, you know, she, it's like helping her learn to read, too, because, you yeah. know, the people in the game write things. I'm not familiar with the out. game, so I don't even know what it's it is. It's madness. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I definitely, like, I, lately, more and more, I've been just realizing how fucking amazing life is, and just mm-hmm. the simple things, the little things that everybody overlooks, it's like... Man, I miss fucking looking at the stars. You know the last time I fucking laid down and looked at the stars? It's probably like eight years ago. <laughs> really? Like little things like that, I just miss. And it's like... I mean, that's primitively built in. Yeah, looking man. at a fire, looking at the water, and by a beach, One of the coolest moments, the man. I, I've mentioned it a couple times lately, but not on no interview or anything. Um, 
we were on tour in 2014, I believe, maybe 13, 14, it was like 14, I believe. We were in Perth, Australia, and we had like a festival south of Perth, so we were staying in some random town, like in Australia, with like, that barely had like fucking street lights, bro, it was crazy, but it was on the ocean, so I think it was me, Joey, and maybe I think Kirk Knight or CJ or someone, we walked over to the beach and just laid down, and there was like a billion stars it was like one of the illest things i've ever seen in my life never seen no light pollution it was insanity and i remember like we just had a dope conversation that night and then the next morning we woke up and um malia obama was wearing a pro era shirt and it was like it ended up being on the news and all that Mm -hmm. and later that night some madness went down but i just remember that moment being like yo shit like this is like because growing up like you know Especially when I moved to New Hampshire, it was like Lawrence, shit like that. Lawrence, was, Lawrence still got stars. I mean, little. I'm not, I, I mean, mean, even Malden. More Malden, up. Malden is the spot. I feel like outside of Boston, that like trees happen, and then finally you start to get yeah. some stars. Yeah. But it's like that. Even little things like that, I miss. And like you know, going jumping off fucking bridges into the water, and like I miss all that shit about New England because you know I'll, I'll probably never live there ever again. But I miss like certain things like. Dude, jumping off cliffs in the water is like my favorite thing. Wait, where would you go in New England? Because we've probably been to the same spots. I I mean, I I grew grew up up going to Newfound Lake, which is near Winnipesaukee. And it was like, we used to take the boat out to these islands and literally jump off these like 30 foot cliffs into the water. It was like my favorite thing in life. I don't get to do that shit anymore. Like when we're on tour now, which obviously has been a while because of COVID, but like we'll go to Croatia and like the promoter would be like, yeah, by the way, there's a cliff that goes on the ocean. I'll be like, bring me there now. <laughs> like, I feel oh, to yeah. do shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just so removed from my life at this point. Even, like, renting a, a lake house and going out on the lake, like, shit like that is, like... You got to, like, build it in in advance, put it in the schedule. Yeah, it's hard, man, because yeah. even when I do that, I get booked for something else, mm-hmm. and it's, like, that's why I haven't... That all goes back to what having a daughter changes it, because... Even, like, going to Hawaii. Like, I brought my daughter to Hawaii, like, four times in, like, a year and a half. Oh, and just going there and going to the North Shore and yeah. going to... Man, that's the shit I love, bro. Like, and I, you don't... You know, we do all this and work our asses off so that we can do shit like that. Mm-hmm. We don't even get then to do it. you don't it. do it. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm tr- now that things are a lot more calmer than the last uh, year, I'm going to start doing a lot more shit like that. For sure. You mind uh, if I use the bathroom real yeah. quick? Yeah. What's up? But but is there a reason why you hate doing doing podcasts? Dude, I do so many. Like my publicist yeah, yeah. doesn't even let me anymore. Really? Yeah. Like when we did when I dropped this last album, he was shutting down and everything. Because a lot of people ask you similar shit. Yeah. It's like. Oh, this is a conversation. This ain't. An no, I know, I know. Yeah, it's just like you know, it's just so many podcasts, and, and then people get like their feelings hurt and shit. It's weird. Well, I mean. For me, this is huge, too, because, I mean, I know I could say it, and I'm sure you hear it all the time, but the influence that you've had on, on my Appreciate life in regards to hip-hop is Appreciate it. is uh, is very big. And, uh, you know, the world. I feel like the world's kind of going to shit, and I feel like intention has been lost. Like, the only way that people read things anymore is if you didn't say it with intention, you wrote it down, and it equals the worst version of what it could possibly mean, right? Mm -hmm. If you say bitch, it's the worst version of bitch. It's not... (laughs) I mean that in a good way. (laughs) Like, somehow high version. But I feel like conversation is the only way that's going to make everything better. Plus, there's... Yeah, yeah, check some of those out. There's a stack next to you, too. You know what's funny about this uh, Midnight Marauders... Cause I remember looking at studying as a kid, and now I'm like friends with like literally every single person on here. It's crazy. Almost, <laughs> like there's people on here that nobody knows who the fuck they are, and mm-hmm. they're just like family now. This is my man Lightro right here. Me and this guy have wild out in like 40 <laughs> countries. Tip actually um, was the first person to bring me on an international tour. Yeah, in 2009. He uh, he brought me to Japan and then Australia and then we did like thirty cities in Europe, like what a fucking time that was. So two thousand, how old are you in two thousand nine? Like, um, it's like twenty eight, twenty nine, twenty seven. Yeah, twenty seven. Yeah, that must what a coming of age. Yeah. What what was the point in time that I mean, listen, everyone's still got to grind and we all got shit we got to handle. But when was the moment that shit turned over to kind of like? more towards the fuck you money and that 
Listen, money ain't everything unless you need it, right? But yeah, I wasn't doing it for the money. It was, I never really like. Now I do certain shit that I'm like, yeah, I got to do that to mm-hmm. to do what I got to do. But um, like. Trust me, I wasn't getting paid crazy on those tours. I went on a lot of tours and came back with like less than I left with. It's crazy because I was out there living, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was always the dude that like, I've been on trips, like I've been to Japan with certain people where I spend more on, my, on food than I made on the trip, and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I don't care. Um, it is what it is. But the, the the shit with Tip was like, not only was he one of my biggest influences, but he became like a big brother so fast. Like I met him in 2006 and um, off the rip, he was just very cool. And then when we we have a, a, a my cousin basically, it was very close with him. And I didn't mention that until me and Tip got cool. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, by the way, Ellie's my cousin. He was like, what? Like he was like mad that I didn't tell him earlier. But, um, you know, we just. But before that, we even made a bond, and he was like, I remember, like, it was yesterday, the day he texted me, he's like, you want to come on tour with me? I'm like, what? Like, yeah. scenario is the record that, by the way, today's the 30th anniversary um, of Low End Theory, but scenario is the record that I was like, nah, I want to be part of this, and now I'm on stage in Paris rapping Busta's part. He used to have me do Busta's part. It was really? fucking hilarious. You rap too? Cause that like I, uh, it was just like I know I know he has a lot of your shit, DJ but, for him yeah, do it, yeah, but yeah. the only people that ever really DJ for Q Tip is DJ Scratch myself and obviously <laughs> Ali Shaheed Muhammad. Oh but, shit, man! What like shh, what a fucking trip, man! And I you know I DJed for him for a couple different tours, mm-hmm. and to this day, if he does a show, he might he hasn't done shows in a long time. But um, you know this guy is he's like this is Mick Jagger at hip hop, bro. Like, yeah, I mean Tip is um you know. One of a kind. For sure. Just being in the studio with him and being on the road and man, he, he's like affected my life the same way Primo has. So God bless Q tip, man. That's uh I mean, how inspirational for anybody else to hear. Like they're they're probably thinking about you that way right now. And you I'm might not meet them for another ten years and then they pop in. Mm-hmm. But that's um the what was the thing that started the love for you? I'm sure you get that a lot, but like I think what it's made me fall in love with hip hop? Yeah, because you were doing. It was a slow process when yeah. I was like seven, eight years old. I remember hearing like LL, and then mm-hmm. um, I had like MC Hammer tapes and stuff like that. But I, scenario was the rap video I saw, and I was like, "This is crazy!" Like I don't know if you remember the video, but it was mm-hmm. so ahead of its time back then. There was nothing that looked like it, and I remember just being like, "This is a crazy energy," and then. um I remember Midnight Marauders dropped, you know, a couple years later. And the day it came out, I got it. It was like my birthday. No, it wasn't my birthday. My birthday was like a month after. I think it came on December and my birthday's in January. So for my birthday, I got it. And um, Yeah, you're a cusp, right? I'm Aquarius, yeah, but a couple of days later. Joey's literally. So Joey Badass is born on January 20th, the first. Oh, you both Capricorn Aquarius cusp. I don't think the 23rd is, though. 17 to 23. Oh, I, I didn't know that. But, um, yeah, so, like, the, it's crazy because, you know, fast forward all these years, right? And I meet this kid, Joey Badass, and, like, he's 13 years younger than me. The same way I'm mm-hmm. younger than Primo and Q-Tip and all these guys, he's that much younger than me. Mm-hmm. And we just, like, had a almost instant bond, man. And now, like, that's, now we're with our kids, you know, at the museum. and he got hanging kids? Out. Yeah, he got yeah. a baby girl. Yeah. Shout out to Go-Go. <laughs> and, um... It's just bugged out, man, how, like, you know, you you start these new bonds. And I remember always being the the, the youngest one. Like, I, even growing up, like, when I lived in Boston, I was hanging out with, like, way older people. And I was always the young kid just trying to learn, carrying crates, mm-hmm. doing this, doing that. And now I'm the OG to, to you know, going on tour. With, I went on tour for the first time with um, Pro Era in 2013. And I'm on a bus with 16, 17, 16-year-olds. <laughs> and I'm like... What the fuck? The tables have turned. And it, it was just, what a fucking adventure that was. And now these guys are, they're all men now. Mm-hmm. Like, I looked at Joey and them as kids for a long time. Joey's 26 years old with a baby girl now. Like, I'm yeah. beyond proud of these dudes. So out to CJ, Nick. Like, this is family now. But, um, yeah, it's just bugged out, man, how hip-hop just brought all this shit together. And to watch, like, I remember being just proud of hip-hop when I met Mac Miller and Joey yeah. Badass and these kids that 
the new generation still holding it down. Because for a long time, it was like we had the Soldier Boys and the fucking... Yeah. Everything was kind of a joke for a while. And then to meet these kids that love... And now we got Corday. Mm -hmm. And we got Yo, kids his, like Jay Grams. And like, there's a whole new generation now. And it's just, I'm really happy because, you know, the style of hip-hop I love is in a great place right now. You know, Alchemist and Freddie Gibbs are up for Grammys. Nas finally got his. Griselda having a run. Like, mm -hmm. all that shit's incredible, man. Look how much further we are. All influenced by, really, at the end of the day... It's all 90s hip hop inspired. Mm, yeah. Or it's not 80s inspired. It's mm. 90s Illmatic, like Wu Tang inspired. All this yeah. shit going on from Corday to, to Conway and Westside to every, all this shit is inspired by Wu Tang and, yeah. and Primo. And, you know, look at Alchemist, man. He's still in the best, he's having the best run of his life. Yeah. And he's been doing this since the 90s. Yeah. I mean, do what you want to do and then make a career out of it. I see what yeah, him and, what action's doing? I mean, all I want to do is, I, dude. I had lunch with action yesterday. Like I bumped yeah. into him at the spot, and we sit down, and both of us are looking at each other like, "Fuck this rap shit!" Like we're just having a blast, yeah. uh, you know, raising our kids and and just living, enjoying this shit, man. It's it's a blessing, man. Yeah, it really is. And to see someone like Corday come out and that that I was not expecting that album to be as good as it was where did you like, hear the new shit man yeah I mean and I mean it just let's put it this way I'm I'm only 32 but it gave me some hope cause yeah. there was like a good 5, 8 year stretch that it was poppy the radio kind of I feel like the second you at least as a hip hop head I started hearing music that didn't give a fuck about the chorus anymore it was yeah. like okay there's a different kind of wave coming. Yep. And I kind of feel like Griselda in some ways represents a new age of Wu Tang. Like, you know. Joey was at my crib the other day with his daughter and um Corday FaceTimed him. And it's funny because like I was I knew Corday before pretty much anyone. Like yeah. shout out to Byron, his manager. Okay. He came up to the show and um like I'm talking about he didn't have one song out. And he came up to the show to play his first record. And um I remember telling Joey about him like right after that, and now they're they're tight, and we're sitting there in three way, and I'm just thinking about him like Corday is like Joey's you know little bro, yeah, and, and yeah. I'm, it's just like a whole generational thing, and I'm just loving it, man, because it's all off this shit we love. Yeah, you keep passing it down, and then I mean, do you feel like when I mean obviously you guys become boys, but there's got to be with that kind of age difference some sort of like real big brother father like aspects that come into the relationship as well or do you kind of hold back from that and just keep it as like nah, just my it, homie it's, it works both ways yeah. like you know there's you been times where, where I learned from them and that's the beautiful thing about it yeah but um when you're talking about like your career and getting to where you're at now I am kind of curious like I mean you see all these losses in hip hop and then just life is just kind of Life is suffering in general. Were there any ever any times that you thought that you'd either give up or it was just a little bit too much to deal with? Never. I, Never. I, I don't even have that luxury of that. Like, what the <laughs> fuck am I going to do? Yeah. I can't give up if I wanted to. Yeah. I'm too far in. So you just go straight into work? Yeah. It's autopilot at this point, literally. Like, it just is what it is. And your process, you just having fun? Yeah, I mean, there's days when it's like, damn, I got to do this. And then mm -hmm. there's days like where I'm fucking, you know, on top of the world. It's just, it, it it's the balancing act, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like, I'll be, in, you know, I, twice in the last couple of years, I've gone to the Bahamas to this, like, the craziest studio on the planet. And, like, the recreational time around it, like, we'll just be like, we'll be in the lab, be like, let's go swimming. Or let's go on the golf carts and do this and do that. And, like, last time I was there was with 2 Chains finishing this album up. And, like, that's a place where, like, when we're in the studio, it's like, nah, this shit is fun. Like, yeah, it's just, it, it, you know, I wouldn't rather be anywhere in the, else in the world. But then there's other times, you know, I'm in Brooklyn mixing a record for somebody I don't even want to, like, be working with. Like, it depends. Mm -hmm. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I, I think I heard you in one interview kind of just say that for the most part, if someone comes through and they're not the sound that you're accustomed to or that you personally uh, fuck with. You just, there's nothing I've personal. I've turned down all the time. I've yeah. turned down A-list artists mm -hmm. on a countless times for my radio show. Like, they'll yeah. be like... Anyone gets super I don't even want to diss nobody specifically, but yeah, they'll be like... Like Waka Flocka, right? He's a really cool dude. I've met him a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. He's really cool dude. 
but has no place on my radio show. Mm -hmm. Someone like that will get presented. I'm like, nah, I'll pass. And they'll be like, what? Like, mm -hmm. all these other DJs will go crazy. I'm like, I'm good. That's just an example because none of his songs are going to make my listeners, uh, you know, it's not what they're tuned in for. Yeah. And I'm not dissing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post Malone doesn't make the kind of songs I, you know what I mean? Like, there's plenty of artists that don't fit the show. And then there's ones that are right on the, the kind of the middle, like Jeezy or like, I've had Jeezy on the show. I've had um, Travis Scott. The first time he came up was 2012. This dude was unheard of. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't really that familiar with his shit like that. And I remember playing a couple of records that didn't fit the show and people were calling up complaining. Really? Rest in peace, um, Chink's Drugs, man. Like, he had a couple that were really dope for the show, but the ones he wanted to play were like these club, strip club records, <clears> and people called up talking shit. Like, it got to fit the show. And like I said, it's, don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. It just got to fit the show because that people tune in for a reason. Yeah. Have you ever done any projects that strayed really far away from your regular sound? Not really. It always, I always took the blueprint Primo left. Like when yeah. you would go and do a song, Christina Aguilera, you could still tell it's Primo. Yeah. So if I go do a record with whoever, I want you to know it's still, you know, my I mean, song. I know it's you. There's yeah. only a couple of people that I might get it twisted with, but you, it's the same vein. Yeah, man. That's, yeah. that's one of the, you know, blessings of finding your own sound. You can do that with Alchemist. You could do it with, mm -hmm. you know, the greats. You can just tell Large Professor. You always know when it's him. You always know when it's, you know, Mad Lib, yep. Dilla, yeah. Tip, like, yeah. Those, you want to always keep that because there's some legends, like really, really important people in my life that kind of lost their sound, and it breaks my heart. Like Primo, you always know it's Primo. Mm -hmm. You always know it's Primo. But you know, this next album I'm excited for. You got a name already, or yeah, I'm not. I'm not <clears> announcing <throat> that yet. When you thinking? After the two chain shit, it's gonna come right after. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but you've only ever paid Styles P. Correct. Well, for my albums, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. As a label owner, actually, I don't even think I paid anybody. I've definitely, um, as a label owner, paid, like, I paid Primo a couple times for Term or Rex mm -hmm. or whoever. Um, but now, as far as, like, my albums, every artist has done it out of a mutual respect. Because, you know, anything they need from me, I'll take care of it. But um, it's always been. And the only reason Styles P is the one is because I was working on my first album. Mm -hmm. I had a little, little budget. And. I was like, I want to get at least like one person that like I, I don't know. I didn't know him at all. I never yeah. met him. We didn't talk once during the making of that song. And then fast forward, now we have a hundred songs together and we're really good friends. And it's an investment. When looking <laughs> back at it, who knows if he even <laughs> shout out to Christy Clifford who managed. He, she used to actually manage me f for a little while. Um, she managed Styles back then, and she's the one that got that the money and all that. And uh, you know, it's funny because. The same album, the same song, Q Tips on, and yeah, yeah. obviously Q Tips, Q Tip, and he's just doing it out of the love. And um, the only reason I ever tell that story is because I just want to show people that, like, when you have real relationships, it could be trade offs, you know? I remember having a conversation with a certain producer, and he's like, What? He's like, I paid everybody on my album. They spent like fucking half a million dollars. I'm like, Shit, you're never making that back. I know a few, few producers that they have. They have good things on their on their tapes. They got great artists. The lineups look amazing, but they were out a lot, a lot of money in order to be able to make yeah. that happen. I've heard horror stories of artists getting paid and not showing up for the videos and caught, like all that. Like, thank God, motherfuckers don't pull that shit with me. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, they know I'm like one of the only people to go to when you have that street record or that that hip hop record. Yeah, where the fuck are you gonna go? You're not gonna. You know, certain shows won't even play that shit. There's a lot of DJs that don't, even, that don't have the power to even do that. Yeah, well, okay, so speaking of that, you'd be picking up new rappers and putting them on. Any new producers? I mean, that... Yeah, a lot. That, um, that you really... Because those, those I will I'll tag up. I'll do my part and, like, shedding the light to. But there's a... Uh, I think that's important. Um... Yeah, I mean, shout out to my man Neff, who's uh, he moved down here from up from New England and kind of, uh, you know, he was like doing his like little, I wouldn't say he was an intern, but pretty much doing intern stuff for me for a while. And his beats were whatever when he moved down here. They, like he knows I wasn't a fan of him. Now his beats are fucking dope as hell. Like he sat around and learned and watched and he's producing all kinds of shit now. Shout out to him. Shout out to... Um, my homegirl Veda, she's been producing for different people. Shout out to um, 
I mean, I like the kid Conductor Williams. I know yeah, he just signed yeah, yeah. Westside. Um, he's been around too. Shout out to one eighty third, one eighty thirds. He's been in the studio with me a lot, just like soaking it up. And he's really dope. He's down with Nim Low. I got an album with Nim coming. Um, Did you ever shadow? I mean, I'm sure you learn by watching. I, mean, I used to just fucking blow up Primo's phone, and any, any, <laughs> any moment I could go to the studio and watch him. You know, the first ten times I went to Primo's studio, he didn't let me sit in the room while he made beats. He yeah. don't really let people do that. And then finally one day he was like, he kind of turned around, and looked at me like, "Yo, you know, I'm about to do this." And I watched him chop up. You know, I've seen him make a lot of beats now, but same with Tip, like. And like you tip's learn? crib is just like you just shut up and sit there. Yeah, yeah. That's the one thing motherfuckers do not learn. And you're gonna learn the hard way when people don't invite you out. Shut the fuck up <laughs> when you're in the studio. Yeah. You know how many people come through my studio and I'm like playing records that ain't out yet and they're just talking? Like you will not be allowed back. That mm. shit is mad disrespectful. Like just shut up when you're in the studio. Unless you're working on the song. So many people have been kicked out of my studio. <laughs> Because I can't even imagine going to preems or tips or whoever mm -hmm. and be like, giving my two cents on something that's not, and even that I can now, but like these people just, oh, it's mind blowing. Was there any artists though that when you did get into a conversation about like production elements, you were like, oh, I kind of like almost like the two brains worked really well together. Like, yeah, guitar would sound really great there. Eh, not really. Not really. I, I, I run the show on all the songs I do. I yeah. mean, me and Alchemist have made, he's the only person I like make beats with. Mm -hmm. And it's been a long time. We, uh, like Al's someone that I really see eye to eye on a lot. And then I don't really have any desire to really work with another producer. It's just, yeah. musicians is different. It's but just... even when the musician comes in, I'm going to be like, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. That's producing. But, um, you know, I, like I've been in sessions with Kanye where he like, I, I learned different things watching him because he's like, he's a producer, producer, producer. Mm -hmm. Like he'll hear something and be like, hold on. And he'll get on the phone with Swiss Beats and be like, send me over the drum track from this song. Like he'll hear a beat and a month later be like, I want that snare. Like he's, mm -hmm. his brain works different. Yeah. I mean, you could, did you, uh, by any chance peep that podcast you did with Rogan? Kanye? Yeah, no, I, didn't see that. I kind of felt like it was the first time that the world got to see the way he could add, the way words come. You ever notice when you talk to a jazz musician, like a really good jazz musician, they're kind of weird because it's almost yeah, like they learned how to speak to the audience better through this yeah. instrument than they did ever with words. So it comes out a little bit different. But you know, it was dope that I always appreciated. So when Tip brought me out on tour with him, the band. Like, everybody in the band ended up being, like, a fucking legend. It's crazy. Like, he had this unknown fucking piano player named Robert Glasper with him. Yo. Casey, ben I see that. Casey Benjamin. Mm -hmm. uh, like, my man Joshua David on the bass. Like, the whole band ended up being, like, fucking greats in their field. And, like, Tip just single-handedly picked them all and put them together. Like, that shit is crazy. That's how ill Tip is, like... Illmatic. Like at the time, <laughs> I didn't have no discography or anything. Like I, I, you know, I had um, at that time, I'm what I had one album on under the belt. I had, you know, I had no placements yet. Like nothing that mattered mattered. Mm -hmm. And Tip just believed in me. And look, bung, like the shit that happened after that is the the real stuff. And 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 you know, I don't know, man. The universe is ill. I mean, you believed in yourself first. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And that got you. There. And I got down on myself many times. Like. You know, I used to battle and back in the day and like there was times where, where certain dudes were like, yo, you're doing that scratch wrong. It sucks. And you got to be, you know, as a kid, it, it hurts sometimes to hear that. But guess what? That's the shit that makes you better. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm scared for the new generations now, because if you say, yeah, they call you a bully, they call you, you this, they, that, man, second. you need someone to fucking to body you sometimes. Yeah. Like if, if you're not acknowledging where you're bad at, like. I don't know, man. Like people are too sensitive now. You, yo, I think every fucking little boy in the world <laughs> should get punched in the fucking face mm -hmm. when they're growing up. Nowadays, it's like people are going to, like, you know, how many parents out there don't want their hit, their kid to get hit in the face, and I understand why. I don't <laughs> yeah, want my yeah, daughter. Yeah, I got yeah, a little yeah, girl, yeah. but she's yeah. gonna be ready to hit you right back. I promise you that. Yeah. Because we're we're in a whole fucking world of people that have never been punched in the face, bro. And it's I mean, very important, man. We're talking about physical contact, let alone the fact that there's a thing called ghosting that exists now. It's like no one ever, for example, like no one ever wants to break up with someone face to face. 
But you're going to learn more about life in those few minutes yeah. and, and be a better Absolutely. person for it. But now people just disappear. That's fucking weird, man. It's very it's weird. weird. It, We're you in know, weird times. Life exists on your Instagram profile. Couples break up. Pictures yeah. get deleted. It's like it, it. it's a very different time. This is why at the end of the day, I, I won't. I mean, granted, there's some guests that I probably would. But for the most part, it's, it's like this only. I think this is important. Yeah. I think... Uh, uh, actual communication needs to be shown. Yep. And motherfuckers yeah. are getting like canceled out here for promoting what used to be just part of life. Yeah. Like this shit is not supposed to be a walk in the park. Uh, there's definitely a, a hidden war on masculinity going on. And there's a war on greatness, man. There's literally oh, for a, sure. a war like everything's normal now to be <clears throat> mediocre. That shit is corny to me. Yeah. Especially in hip hop. Like if yeah, you're not yeah. ready to rock at any time, I don't care if you're a DJ, a rapper, Whatever, a break dancer, a graffiti artist, whatever you do, if you're not ready to go to war at any moment and show why you're worth what you're worth, you're a fucking herb, bro. Like, <laughs> there's rappers out there that can't rap when you put the mic on and go, yo, you're on the. And I'm not saying you have to rap when people say rap, because that's another yeah, thing yeah. in hip hop that's kind of out of control. But, like, I mean, if you can't do it, you're a fucking herb. For dude. sure. I mean, like, I don't respect no DJ that, that if, if you put two turntables in front of them, they can't do something dope right now on the spot. Doesn't matter what record it is. Yeah. If you can't do that. I don't respect you. Yeah. I mean, it's weird, though. How many people that you work with, I feel like it's 50-50 of the, the dope rappers I actually know that are writers versus flowers, right. and then their creative process gets is dramatically different because of that. But I know some amazing artists that cannot freestyle for shit. And when you hear them, I mean, it's kind of like we lost sense of the actual term freestyling because what we hear is it's always been a gray area yeah it's definitely it's definitely a gray if you're area. not reading it off a of paper you're freestyling man even if you knew the rhyme it's in your head who the fuck's to say what's not you know yeah yeah you watch Especially, black dot and black dot will the way he does it is obviously those rhymes are in his head mm -hmm. but he takes them and puts them together like a puzzle yeah, yeah. that shit's ill that's still freestyling mm -hmm. and if you really told him yo you got to rap off the top of the head right now he all fresh it. rhymes he'll do it too yeah yeah I mean, we're also talking about like the best in the world. I mean, I think he's but, literally. You know, the freestyle thing's been funny for years because it got crazy. I think in, in the mixtape era when rappers would just do a freestyle for a DJ, and what they do is just spit a verse off the album that's yeah. about to come out, yeah, yeah. so that the rhyme's not wasted, which is smart. Because mm -hmm. then the album comes out and it's like, oh, I heard that on that. And the fan kind of gets disappointed, but at the same time, the rapper got the look on the mixtape, and, the and he didn't waste the run. It yeah. didn't just go on that mixtape. For sure. So it is what it is. So what's your opinion on this? So I feel like maybe RZA did this some of the times, but there are a lot of times where you got cats, like I feel like you're... Your Dave East, your, I mean, even. That's funny what, you just said that. That's some universe shit. Yeah. Because when you said RZA, last night I saw footage of Dave East playing a record I produced for RZA. Oh, shit. That's bugged out you just said that. Yeah. Shout out to I'll Nim get Low. Both, I'll get both them It's on, a yeah. record that on Nim Low's album that Dave East, we just shot an incredible video for it. And I never knew that RZA was in the studio when they did it. So I'm watching this footage last night and RZA's going crazy this shit. And I remember. I didn't really get time to digest it last night. It's kind of hit me right now, like how dope that was. That Riz is like bugging out off my shit, and I got some a little history with the Riz. We're not, you know, we're not best pals, but I've been I've been in the studio with with Kanye and Riz out in Hawaii, and um, had some <laughs> really crazy conversations, like really yeah. shit we would all get canceled for if it was fucking recorded. Just crazy yeah. conversations, because Riz was originally on Power, and. He was talking RZA, classic RZA talk on it, and Kanye decided to pull it because RZA was using certain words that Kanye's pretty smart for doing that. Because instead <laughs> they put the part where it's like I'm jumping out the window. Yeah, 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 they yeah, put yeah. that where RZA was like saying some wild, wild, wild shit. Yeah. And it's just cool, man. Just watch it. You know, RZA's in my top. You know. Yeah. Huge, huge influence in my life. So well, I read the Tao of the Wu, and I. I I'm not sure there's a smoking gun in there, but I do feel like he understood that there are certain people that are gonna, you know, when you hear someone freestyling, they'll never, and it's really off the dome for the first time. Yeah. It's almost like grabbing and embodying that emotion and rhythm that came out that time is very hard to reenact. So will you ever just have like, an, like, Sure, you got a track and someone might write to it, but do you ever just be like, yo, you want to just like flow on this for a while? 
See what comes Joey out. Joey does that sometimes. You know who's the fucking illest man? Freeway, bro. Like, yeah. He doesn't write, so he'll just sit there for like five minutes, and he'll be like, I'm ready. And he'll have a whole In fucking song written. Yeah, that's how Styles P does it, too. And Jay, right? Yeah, that's... <clears throat> Jay and Biggie were like the first ones to make that a thing. Um, that's like genetic. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I understand how they do it, yeah. but Freeway is like one of the best ever at doing that shit. Like, we did a, whole, we did a live album back in 2011, and... He set the whole thing off. I, like, it was the first time I ever did a song with him in person. We had songs done, but I never did a per- song in person with him. I just knew he worked fast. And he's just sitting there for like five minutes listening to the beat. And he's like, I'm ready. And he gets, he spits this whole rhyme about what's going on at the moment. He's like saying what time it is, all this shit. And he wrote the whole verse in his brain. And the way he did it that fast was so incredible, man. Like, i never seen anything like that. Little Fame does that too, but Fame will do like piece by piece. Like, Styles and Freeway literally write the whole shit in their brain. They're like, all right, put the mic on. Like, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. But but Davey says, Styles, Styles don't use, or Styles don't write no more. I pray and never see the pen. Yeah. Meaning, like, pen, pen <laughs> Um, But, yeah, man, that's, uh, I mean, I feel like it would be pretty dope to, to even just get those like what used to be known as a mixtape level type of track not too much care went into it but at the same time you got to monetize your stuff and you got to be careful with it i mean at any given time how many on deck tracks you got sitting there unreleased shit yeah dude i have if you cleared my whole discography everything i ever did to this moment and it just started from right now what's about to come out it would still fucking be the craziest shit of all time. Like, the mm-hmm. shit I have in the stash right now that's about to come out is bananas. And that's kind of a goal I keep for myself. I want at all times mm-hmm. me to have <clears throat> enough unreleased shit that's not out yet to, like, take over the year. Like, I have... At this point, man, I got a record. See, I can talk about some of it now because I've seen certain people talk. Like, I got this record on Russ's album Do you? with Lloyd what? Banks and um, Sci High the Prince. It's bananas. <clears throat> I got... Two records I did for the biggest fucking pop star in the fucking planet that's coming. I ain't saying the name, but you can probably guess it. Um, yeah. I got, man, I got um, the Two Chains album's gonna speak for itself, and the features on their insanity. Um, some of the shit I got from my new album, like that I started. I got a single Wu Tang Clan, which I'm really excited about because I've never had a record that said Wu Tang Clan, and that's gonna be one of the singles. Um, Everybody, that's a lot. Almost. Yeah. Almost. It's a lot of them. Um, let me think. I got some shit with Method Man coming out for this video game that's crazy. You and Meth sound great together. I think you too. We only... I'm trying to think. We got... We got the Join on Bum B's album. Mm-hmm. And we got the Join on My Last Album. I think we... Yeah, we only have two songs that have ever came out so far. But, like, I've known Meth for... I did a show with Method Man in 99 that... I was telling him about last time we were in the studio. He was bugged. He actually remembered the show too, which is bugged because that guy's done. He's done more shows than probably anybody besides the Roots. The Roots do like more shows than anybody. Yeah, still looking like he ain't aged in ten years. He got that black thought effect too, where like these guys get better. Yeah, like Method Man's better at rapping right now than he probably ever has been. Yeah, for sure. He's always been great. Black Thought's better right now than he's ever been. Voice of Five Nines better right now than he's ever been. That Pharrell Monch. They all got that effect. Royce's last album, I was just like, I was, and and I was also like, thank you for giving me more than fucking 12 tracks. A lot of people don't know me and Royce's history either. Like, that dude, I've watched him go to the his highest heights mm-hmm. and the lowest lows. Like, yeah. I've been in fucking strip clubs in Revere <laughs> with Royce fucking blacked out, like, in 2001. Squire. Yeah. <laughs> I brought him to the fucking Squire. Yeah. Drinking Bacardi Limon, bro. Yeah. Like, this is when he was down and out. Like, you know, he wasn't fucking with M no more. Like, he was just... And we were... I would fucking geek to having him in the crib. He was recording my bathroom, bro. Like, the shit was real. And I watched him go slowly build brick by brick back up. Mm-hmm. Working with Preem again. And then when he squ- when he fixed everything with Dre and M to doing Bad Meets Evil and he sobered up, I watched Royce's whole evolution and that dude is like one of the greatest human beings and incredible MC, man, incredible father. Like I was there when he got locked up, did his mixtape while he was in jail. He got out like the... Shout out to Royce, man. Me and him got a long, long history. Damn. I was there when they decided to call the group Slaughterhouse. Like... 
lot of crazy nights, man. Yeah, that's wild. Shout out to the whole slaughterhouse, and it's funny because me and Button were never really that cool, and now we're. I seen him at the um the forty forty anniversary a couple of weeks ago, and we we chopped it up for a long time. And then you know, same with Joel. I was working with Joel before anyone fucking knew who he was. Me and Crooked got an album together. Like a lot of uh, different personalities, man. Yeah. I watched Crooked go sober. I'm probably part of the reason he went sober. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why is that? Because he came to New York to do like a little promo run and shoot some videos for our album, yeah. and we were on one. Yeah. We overdid it. There's actually a list of rapper of rap uh, <laughs> legends that I probably went sober because of me. I was a big chunk of some of that. Dante Ross is one of them. There's a lot of them. But, but so speaking of the balancing act, you just always been better than most at being able to to put things into categories like I'm partying right now and right now is work or why have you I mean, stayed? it was rough when I, when I had, you know, my daughter was different cause especially now that I'm a single dad, like when I'm with her, I don't drink at all. Mm -hmm. Like I'll go places. People will be like, take a shot. Nope. I got my daughter tonight. Like, so that's, that's the real balance in act there. Cause I used to be out every night. Now I'm like only out the nights I don't have her. So yeah. that's a whole different lifestyle, man. Like really just, Different clarity, you know? Because yeah. the weekends, is like, I'm in the studio, there's weed smoke, there's fucking alcohol everywhere. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. It's been part of my life since I was a kid. But when I'm with her, it's like, you know, straight clarity. Like, you know, going to, even going to dinner and not drinking, like, is like a new thing in my life. Yeah. But when I'm with her, that's a wrap. I don't do it. So, it's, it's needed, trust me. But you always felt like you had a pretty good handle on being able to be... I mean, let's not say disciplined, but somewhat disciplined about it. I'll say this, man. Like, we, everybody fucking in, in this world yeah. dr drinks a little bit too much. That's a fact. When I first, you know, when me and her mother first split up, a lot of people counted me out. Like, a lot of people thought I wasn't going to be able to, like, to do it. Mm -hmm. And I fucking bodied it. I proved, my, including my own mother, I proved everybody wrong, including my best friends. Every, and myself Like I literally proved Everybody wrong And I fucking Sobered up Like that's it And I'm happy I mean now You know I have drinks On the weekend But all week I don't drink Yeah so, I mean that's huge Yeah It's I mean you You no, don't The hard part is Going and DJing And yeah. like Letting up it's a Tuesday night And staying sober That shit is new to me Cause The fuck <laughs> My whole life I've been just like It's on my rider A bottle of Hennessy And a thing of mm -hmm. Heineken's Like that's part of the life and like you know, it is what it is. I mean, I, it's I almost it. it's almost not weird if you're like, all right, I'm not gonna drink anything when I go and DJ tonight. But it is weird if you didn't have that commitment, committed thought beforehand, and then you get there and you're like, I really wish I had a drink right now. But yeah. I don't feel like that. You don't? Nah, because That's I good. know that I gotta wake up at seven a.m. and yeah. bring my daughter to school. Yeah, yeah. Or do this, and it, it, it's definitely a well needed blessing, man. It is what it is. We do and, this thing. Uh, Actually, Ben and I started it. I hit him up one year. This is five years ago now. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, I'm starting a Sober October challenge. If uh, you're trying to get down. So he was the first one that ever did it with me. First year, it's just October. me and him. Second year, it was 75 people. By the third mm -hmm. year, we had over 200 people wow. doing it with my us. My boy does it in January, and it's fucked up because my birthday's in January. So I'm like, <laughs> bro, how are you going to do that to me? He used to make exceptions on my birthday. Yeah. But now he's washed up and Ex married, and he ain't around. That's anywhere. a good exception, though. I mean, he ain't yeah. around. No. So okay. I'm making I'm making this a thing. I'm putting this in the universe. We had the discussion last night, but this is my 40th birthday coming up in January. I'm going to Dubai, man. It's the only place I've never been that I wanted to go to. So I'm make I'm making that clear right now because I have to focus on it because no matter what happens that week I gotta still go there. So I'm excited for that. I want to go ride dune buggies in the desert. You'll go skydiving too. You talking about jumping off of cliffs and shit? Dubai is a great spot I to go. I'm not doing that ever in my life. <laughs> no, never, no. never. I hate no. heights. Like even in the but you like cliff jumping, but you don't like heights. My new building, nah, but that's different because water. Yeah, I don't mind yeah, it yeah, over yeah. water, and yeah. I don't mind being on an airplane because it's enclosed. Yeah. I love being on airplanes. It's where I have my best thoughts. But that's some shit that changes, too, when you, when you have a kid. Because, like, I remember I used to fly so much. I would be on at least seven, eight flights a week like it was normal. And I remember being like, yo, it's been a fucking amazing life. Knock on wood. Anything happens right now. Even though you have way more chance of getting, like, fucking hit by a car than you do yeah. dying on an airplane. But, um... I remember being on the flights and being like, yo, if, if it all ends right now, like, what a That's ride. Good. 
then I had a baby and I'm like, fuck that. I need to get the fuck home. <laughs> yeah. I used to be like, yo, fuck it. Like, I used to be like, it is what it is. It's been an ill ride, you know, still move yeah, a certain yeah. way. Now it's like anxiety attacks. I hate even being on airplanes now. It's weird. Really? Yeah. Like, every she, time I'm on an airplane now, I, I get this, like, crazy anxiety. Like, I just want to go hold my daughter. Like, it's crazy. That shit only started the day she was born. Damn. Well, it really started two days before she was born. We were in, we were in Europe on tour, and we were in, like, Germany or some shit. And I remember being on that flight home, like, this is it. The baby's coming in, like, a couple of days. And it just, like, it started right then, and it never ended. I mean, it's something. And you got, you literally, part of you is is in this girl. And while mean. this is happening, you know, all of a sudden, Sean Price dies. And then um, Prodigy. And then Mac Miller. And it's, like, all this shit's adding up in my brain where I'm, like, yo, I just want to. I remember being, like, yo, I want to I wanna see her first birthday. I want to see her fifth birthday. Now it's like, I want to see her get married, you know? Like, yeah. I want to be here. And it wasn't like that before. Like, life was just so fucking fragile. And now it's like, I'm trying to move completely different. And it's it's growing up, I guess. But it's kind of late for that. But it is what it is, man. I mean, it doesn't stop. Yeah. It never stops. So what are some of the things you'd be paying attention to for health, both mental and physical? Because I don't... The only I could only imagine my mental your health, really, bro. The only thing that fixes my mental health is being busy. And that's not yeah. good. I used to go to therapy. I got to start again. Yeah. But um, that started early, man. Like, I got sent away when I was 11 years old. Like, what you mean pr- sent Pretty away? much, like, locked up. It was, like, a, a place for troubled kids. Mm-hmm. I was in there for, like, I don't know, like a AIC month or some shit. type of place. But um, I was 11, and all the kids in there were, like, 14, 15. So I, I grew up mad fast. Like, I learned about a lot of shit I shouldn't have learned about from gangs to sex, like, in a couple-week process. Mm-hmm. And came out of there a whole different person. So, like, mental health has been a thing that I've always, I just thought it was normal. And now I'm watching everybody talk about it and acknowledge it now. But back then it was, like, we're talking about 1993. Yeah. I mean, um, go figure why our fathers can't. And know. I think it's part of the reason I work so hard because it's, mm-hmm. like, you can't be depressed and fucking out when you're just busy. Yeah. And then when, that's the scary part, though. Shout out my man JFK. He always says, like, it's the in-between time to get you. Mm-hmm. And now having a daughter, it's amazing because that fills the in-between time and keeps me sane. Yeah. Where it's like before before I had a daughter, it was like, bro, I was so busy it didn't really matter. But when there was like a little break, like I don't have a gig this week or I don't have this or that, I'd go out and find it. Because mm-hmm. if I stayed home and like thought about crazy. it, I'd fucking lose my mind. So, um, yeah, uh, you said just, something. Just like, focusing on... Like, so is there anything that now that you try to implement that was different from the past 15, 20 years of just... Oh, the health thing. Yeah, yeah, nah. Yeah. So I do my black seed oil and my... Um, I do sea moss. I do um, all kinds of different... Uh, like, I take... Uh, what's it called? Um, this, like, beet. It's like... Oh, yeah. Beet. It's for your <clears> blood <throat> pressure. You know, I, I take certain pills but i've been getting off it i get gout and that shit sucks but really? i haven't had it in a long time damn because so, I, I basically cut out beer pretty much all together um you got to be careful with certain like asparagus gives you yeah. it like stupid shit gives you it you can't have any soda that comes with um like this shit right here this is real shit yeah like, I, that's no, clean there's yeah. no uh if you read the back it should have nothing high fructose corn syrup is one of the worst of that. things on the planet yo for real you won't sleep as good you'll be you'll, it'll make you anxious yeah. everything so like the stomach I, I tells the brain how to feel. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I do... I've been riding my bike a lot. Like, I ride my daughter to school at 7 in the morning. That shit's a whole nother challenge because <laughs> it's one thing riding a bike yeah, at 2 yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 7 in the morning, like, riding 4 miles is no joke. But there's something about getting your blood going With the baby first thing. on the bike. Oh, like, shit. that's another... Yeah, yeah. No, she's like, what, 45 pounds? Like, yeah. that's another, you know... Yeah. But I love it, and um, I've been doing that. I've been working out here and there. I got a gym in the building now, and I've used it like twice, so I got to step that up. Yeah. Um, but moving see. was a big step for me because this new crib is like you just moved. Yeah, yeah. I live in like a luxury building with the pool, the illest views of the city. Like it's very. And what was it before? Before I lived in I lived in Williamsburg before, but it was like there was literally like projects across the street. So it was like, it wasn't like I was walking outside and like smiling here. It's like, bro, I wake up and look, I'm looking at the empire state building when I wake up. Oh damn. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's it's beautiful. Dope. I take the ferry to the city, like fuck a cab. Like it's dope. <laughs> it's dope. Oh yeah. But yeah, I mean the, the health stuff, I mean, that's super important, you know, 
I read this book, Atomic Habits, and they would just be saying stuff like uh, when you try to build in a new routine, just tie it to something that you already do every day. So a good example would be is if you leave work at 5 o'clock before you shut your computer, allow yourself to shut your computer after you did 10 push-ups, right? It's not a right. lot, but it still makes 100. You know what I do? I play Call of Duty. And if like you lose, or if you get like less than uh, oh, you do one up, you got to do ten push-ups. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. a rule. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that shit can add up. Oh, There's been yeah. nights I did seventy push-ups just because in a couple games. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> you meditate? Nah, I tried, man. My brain's too fucking staticky. No pun intended. It's just <laughs> distortion. Like, but I it's tried. not supposed to be clear. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'll keep trying, but There's I'm not gonna lie. Lately, I've been sleeping a lot better. Um, why you think that is? I was like before I was taking melatonin and C B D and it was like giving me nightmares and shit. Lately really? I've just been yeah, I've just been like, you know what, on some fucking shit. All the shit that was stressing me out for a long time, mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> Gotta just get to the get to the goals, man. That's it. Yeah. Well, then that's probably why. I mean, your mind state changing. Yeah. I think it's the new crib too, like going to bed with the city lights is like dope before i lived in like a, i had like a first floor apartment and the bedroom was in the basement it was a nice apartment mm -hmm. but like there was no light or air yeah, downstairs if you don't get it was the like sun. it would get mad like just i don't know i'd be like coughing from dry like it was weird now it's like fucking amazing like sun wakes you up right yeah yeah i sleep with one of those fucking the eye <laughs> colors <laughs> do, do you real. really yeah. damn that's like the beginning of a music video yeah man it is what it is where the track plays no, that's 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 huge. I mean, health all around. Plus, your daughter's gonna see you taking care of yourself. And I've been like just enjoying life again, like on some with the ladies and all that. Like, I, yo, I went like a year where I was like in such a funk dealing with court and all this shit, where I wasn't even like dating or any of that shit. I've been having fun again and just like enjoying the shit. Yeah, I mean, it. You got it. Takes a while to get over that kind of shit. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, it's my first time single in eight years, so it's like. Damn. And now it's like Since weird. you were my age COVID it's like Come on man Dating is not the same Yeah No not at all <laughs> Not <laughs> at all Back in the all. day I'd be like yo, I'd literally walk into a bar And go hey You wanna go to Brooklyn And like <laughs> yeah, It was it Brooklyn. Nowadays it's like It's fucking weird Yeah I don't know How do you feel about all that I know your publicist Probably don't want you talking but About what COVID, COVID. Yeah. I think it's 100% uh, It was a purpose Like people put it out on purpose Yeah um, the shit is real. Oh, we didn't even talk what? about this. We'll keep it short. I almost died two months ago. You got like, it? I've had it three times. The first two times. Three? Were, yeah. Tested And positive. I was the guy that used to be like, yo, you can only get it once. That's bullshit, man. Yeah. Once your antibodies are gone, you could get it like worse than ever. So you have natural immunity up to a certain it's amount like of time. It's like four months or some shit. Yeah, yeah. And we still don't know the answers. The shit is all yeah. suspect. I don't trust the we'll government. We'll never know the data. Nobody. I will say this though to everybody saying the shit ain't real, you're bugging. The shit is <clears> real <throat> deal, holy feel, bro. How bad was it? I, I couldn't walk to the bathroom. That bad. It was for like how I ran long? a marathon for about, I'd say six days was like the worst of it. And it was the point, my mother saved my life a couple times in my sleep. Um, in like your if sleep? If she wasn't there, I would have died. I would have died in front of my daughter, knock on wood, if, if, if she wasn't there. She saved my life a couple times. And. It was scary, man. Like I was, I was in my head. I was like, "Yo, I was the dude talking shit to all my friends about vaccines and all that shit." And I was like, "I'm gonna be the guy that fucking gets it and fucking dies talking all that shit." And it was close, man. Like I had people begging me to go to the hospital. I didn't go. Really? I stayed on my. You, you take know, anything? I mean, just natural shit. I was yeah. taking, you know, like I said, black seed oil, sea moss, mm -hmm. uh, like multivitamins, all that shit. Taste I barely, smell. I, bar I lost 19 pounds in one week. Damn. I barely ate. I ba I didn't have I didn't drink the whole time obviously, but mm -hmm. I had my daughter with me the whole time and she she helped save me too, man. But that shit is real deal. Mm -hmm. Um you know, be careful, man. Like it's so I don't even like saying be careful cuz you could get it It's like the girl that's a virgin that gets AIDS the first time she <laughs> fucking has sex. It's like you can't man, kids. I I've had certain people be like I only go around people that are close to me. It don't matter if someone's close to you. Now. Yeah, it doesn't matter it if it's a complete stranger. Time, the time. shit, all it takes is one time to get it. So it's like, it's be on point. Um, Did you feel like when you got it, though, you were runner? Like, I mean, you bro, got a pretty shit, lively lifestyle. The first couple times down? was whatever. Like, I'm, the first time I got it was January 2020. Around and your birthday? We didn't, know what, we didn't know what COVID was. We heard about it. They yeah. said it was in China. And we thought we were all just sick. Now, the reason I know we had it 
is when we did the antibodies test a couple months later, it was like, it was fucking full blown. Yeah. So it had to be that time. Um, and then I got it like the end of the year, I went to Vegas and got it out there. And then that's the first time I tested positive. And this last time was like, dude, and my mother, this is why I fuck with the vaccine now, because my mother had the vaccine and I was talking shit to her when she got it. Yo, she got COVID the same time as me. Cause you get COVID with the vaccine. Yeah, Everybody I know it. is vaccinated got <clears throat> COVID. Mm -hmm. But she was like coughing and shit. That's it. Like she, the less. vaccine fucking probably saved her because yeah. the, it was definitely the, the, the Delta variant, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Bro, that shit hit me. First time I had a fever and I was like, whatever. Bro, within a day or two, I'm talking about I couldn't. Like if I went, if I did that, it felt like my whole chest was on fire. I couldn't, I could barely breathe. The only time I could breathe is if I laid down and just stayed calm. But as soon as, if I like tried to breathe heavier, it would hurt. Like I, if I went, like I said, going to the bathroom was like, it felt like it was like walking two miles to go Damn. to the bathroom. And uh, yeah, man, that was, that was a scary time. So were, you, I, were you like pretty run down when you think you caught it? Cause I mean, you had a pretty active lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure I know exactly when I got it too. Yeah. Everybody went to this event <laughs> in Bushwick, and like everybody that went got it. Got it. Like yeah. my man Lamore Supreme, he's fully vaccinated, and he fucking got it like yeah. just as bad as me. Like he yeah. got fucked up. <clears throat> so it's scary, man. Like, what you think of the passport, though? <sighs> Some suspect shit going on, yeah. but I think it was all done on purpose. Yeah, it's the one percent cleaning up. Yeah, I mean population yeah. control is real. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll never get the I real just picture. hate it because, like, some people go so fucking far with it. Yeah. Where they're like, the shit is not real. It's in people. Like, no, the shit is real. Mm -hmm. It's evil as fuck, but it's real. Yeah. I think the one thing, I mean, I, I know a lot of people that are against everything about it, but I try to let them know. It's like, listen, you need to re still respect that shit because there ain't no simple fucking. I don't know what's in the vaccine, but I know there's no fucking microchips. Nobody yeah, gives yeah. a fuck about you bum ass <laughs> motherfuckers thinking you're special. It's yeah, not yeah, about yeah. that. But there's a bigger picture that's pretty evil going on. Yeah, and the dangerous part is, is I mean, we don't test for the Delta variant, but the simple fact that we are giving the vaccine that doesn't keep you from getting it just means biology one-on-one, -on -one, you're asking for this shit to mutate again. So it's like there's a lot of horrible shit that probably was done purposefully, but in a year we could be having a really real conversation about a completely different variant. I don't think no, nobody's going back inside again, though. Not the way we, we just saw, like, if tomorrow New York City was like, yo, no more clubs, no more that, motherfuckers would still be, be outside, out bro. People, yeah. Like, for real. Like, people are over it, man. I mean, it's too much. Now, now, what, 80% of the city got the vaccine, supposedly? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to do? You can't shut... Uh, uh, you're going to shut down the city and say, what? A new vaccine? Beat it. That shit yeah, is like... Yeah, Get another dose, whatever. It's, it's too crazy. much. Definitely too much. Well, and if you get another dose, cool. That's, that's what... Uh, other vaccines do. You got to get a flu shot once a year. It is what it is. Yeah. And I still don't, you know, human beings have survived a lot of shit and it's going to be human beings to fucking kill other human beings. It's not natural <clears throat> disease, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why it was kind of nice for, uh, what's his name to go on, uh, the Co Colbert show and, uh, cool. John Stewart. And oh, he, he's the man. Yeah. And he, and he, he kind of made that comment. He's like, what do you mean we didn't get it from China? <laughs> the place that's got a, a facility called the novelty Corona. I mean, how about the fact that Fauci fucking funded that thing and didn't yeah. even lie about it. He's mm -hmm. like, yeah, that was my lab that it fucking came from. And you're the fucking spokesperson for it. Get the fuck out of here. I, yeah. I don't trust none of these. Here's another thing though. We've been lied to our whole fucking lives. And it's like, at this point they admit it. Yeah. Like the government admits they lie to us yeah. and then they expect us to trust them. It's like, that's why you got fucking rednecks not wanting to go and get the vaccine. And, you know, intelligent people as well. It's like, nobody trusts you, bro. We've been lied to our whole life about religion, about fucking taxes, about all this shit, about <clears throat> going to school and college. Dude, more people go to school and go to college and end up broke as fuck than anybody else. And, and the still, richest people I know didn't even go to college. And you still ain't said one thing about being more healthy. Right. Yeah. Oh, th but they'll promote fucking. No emphasis. They'll on the fast food. It has more placement than anything, mm -hmm. and it's like you're not promoting uh, your immune system. And not once to this day no. have I watched Biden or Trump or any of these D, assholes Zing, go on and nothing. be like, "Hey, why don't you take care of yourself?" They don't say it ever. Mm -hmm. They just go, "Hey, good, like good luck." 
I think and, you know, I can't stand Donald Trump, but Biden is not. <laughs> he ain't fucking impressing me. I agree with that, too. I mean, fuck I, I all. always fuck I get, them all. Fuck them all. They're all liars. But the second you try to have a logical conversation and exclude feelings. All, you Trump, know, had to do, yo, all Trump had to fucking do, bro, is denounce racism like That's once it. in a while. Yeah. Be like, yo, I don't fuck with that side. He He couldn't do it. Yeah. All he had to do, he would have won so many minorities he and would've. just he already had so many. People, yeah. He would have won them over by yeah. just being like a decent fucking person. Mm. He couldn't do it. But they're all narcissists. They're all fucking. And then there's the people who are like, no, Donald Trump's you know a man of the people, and he's not mm. part of the establishment. He's that never motherfucker been a man wouldn't of people. hold the door for your fucking grandmother, bro. What are yeah. you talking about? He's never been a man of the people. It, and the people that love him, he wouldn't fucking have a converse. Like he despises you. Like, he can't stand you. You're poor. Mm -hmm. The fuck are you talking about? It always drove me nuts. It's like you'd hear all these conversations talking about Trump saying how stupid he is. It's like, why don't you have a conversation talking about how how smart you are? (laughs) Yeah. And how and he's not stupid. He's sure we don't like what he said, but he said it to generate a specific effect. Right. Like he's doing it for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's a fucking weird, weird, weird ass world right now. Yep. But um, you're raising a daughter in it, so. Yeah, man. I always think about the day I'm gonna just fucking dip out and buy an island, or even like I've been looking at like villages for sale. They sell <laughs> Have you villages. Really? Where? Like Vermont and like Maine. Yeah, Vermont. Both of Vermont's those. Dope. Dope. I fuck with Vermont. Yeah, and there's no building codes. You do whatever the fuck. Bro, you, want. you can buy a village for like. Yeah. I think it's like I seen one for two million dollars a couple of days ago with ten buildings in it. Really? Like, just go in with a couple people, you can be buy there. a village, put up a fucking fence around it, and yeah. be like, you can literally, like, police yourself. Even though I'm sure the local police will, like, come and check it out. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Go to a small town that has four cops. Mm-hmm. Be cool with them. Don't fucking cook meth, and you'll be okay. You got you to do your <clears throat> Dave Chappelle thing in Vermont? Yeah, <laughs> I would love that. I mean, uh, there's not really too many people that could be in a better position than you to actually... Picture a hip-hop, like, you know, secret community. That show would be ill. That would be, that'd be real, though. And it's needed. Or not even just hip-hop, like a creative Culture. place. Yeah. That shit, I'm surprised nobody's done that. Well, I know why people don't do it, because when you have enough money to do it, you want to stay the fuck away from everybody anyway. Mm. Like, think about someone like... Um, I gotta be careful who I say because a lot of these people. Are my, <laughs> it's all like, good. Like, I'm gonna say someone I don't know, like, mm-hmm. like I don't know Little Wayne like that. So, someone like Little Wayne can like just buy a fucking a little community and like yeah. make it ill. But here's yeah. why he's not gonna because everybody that comes around him has an ulterior motive or needs something like that. I understand why you wouldn't do that, but if you do it for like family that you fucking trust and real friends, that shit would be dope. Yeah, and if it's just an event, I mean. If you're no, doing not an event. I'm talking about like a community. Living. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but I mean, we might have to if fucking more of this weird shit keeps going on. Yeah. Well, next thing you know, it's imagine when they turn off the internet. That shit would be crazy. Just imagine if the power went out for. By the way, this is. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. This is World War Three right now. Like it, the shit going on. World War Three does not come in the forms of nuclear weapons. It we comes ain't seeing that shit again. It's, it's fake over. information. Let's. It's, but the the internet is a big part of yeah. it. Yeah. But what about someone creating a virus that literally just deads the internet in areas? People fucking. Mm. There'll be people in the street like ripping off their flesh, bro. Like people will lose their minds if they can't go on Instagram for a day. Yeah. Fucking nuked off the planet. Fucking company. You know just what? Just wait till you watch Yo, the social oh, dilemma. Rewind, rewind. It's gonna fuck up you your head. You gotta edit this part up. But if um, you hear this right now, he didn't delete it, and I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the wait till you watch, watch the social dilemma, right? I think that the most important thing that that gets to is we need to add some shit to this constitution. Since the internet came around, yeah. there's some things that are I missing. Think. First of all, you got little things like with me, right? I get rated, I do all the shit, I do my time, everything on my record gets cleared, and yet I'm still prevented from you doing it. What? No, I mean, Are like, you I, just saying in general? Like I, I got probation, right? Because okay. the people I was fucking with were different. But I get probation, right? I, I basically get my record cleaned. And yet, if you Google my name to this it day, comes up. the picture comes up next to the LinkedIn. Now I know the author of that article. When I was on the news, I know that news station, they took all that shit down, but the picture is still on Amazon. Yep. Right. Imagine someone not in my position with less than I had 
trying to get back up on their feet. And then let's fast forward it, right? Humans rubberneck. When you're on the highway, you're like, why is there traffic right now? And then 15 minutes later, you realize there's a traffic on the other, there's an accident on the other side of the road, right? What the algorithms do, it's they're not evil. It's just they know human nature likes to look at accidents. So imagine what the highway would be like if all you did was put accidents on the other side. Shit ain't going to move. There needs the only way that's going to change is if we put something in our law that says there's only a specific amount that you're allowed to take advantage of. Otherwise, YouTube's like, we're just going to keep feeding you accidents, although it's the Holocaust didn't happen. Flat Earth, blah, 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 all this kind of shit. And it's, um, I don't know. It's you, you start with, you start looking into like World War II and you end with the Holocaust didn't happen. That's not because YouTube's devilish. That's just because the algorithm says people like to look at car accidents. Yep. Here's the next car accident in yep. your genre, Absolutely. you know? And that's, I mean, same. They're, they're going to keep rewriting history, man. The music's the same way, though. There's in a, a powerful in a lot speech. Of ways. Um, there's a powerful speech that Michael Jackson made. I don't know if you've ever seen it. And he's like, he's like kind of drunk and he's talking mad shit to the room. There's probably like a hundred people in the room and he's like, watch, he's like, when I'm gone, they're going to rewrite my history, blah, 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 all that. And they, they tried doing it. I mean, it's sad. You could tell, you know, every judge in the world has let this guy off and cleared his name mm-hmm. and there's still mad people out there. They're like, he's a pedophile because of one, two fucking assholes mm-hmm. that changed their story and made it. Oprah's a bad person, bro, for fucking even putting that documentary out because Wade Robson's a fucking known manipulating liar that's been on a mission since he was fucking a kid to be a superstar. And when he realized that the Jackson family cut him off, changed his whole shit, been proven a liar mad times, like, the shit is so sad because Mike is like, one of the greatest human beings to ever live. Like, didn't she also, though, have a family? I didn't see the documentary, but don't didn't... watch it. It's, okay. it's all lies. It's literally Oprah, fucking lies. Oprah put it together. She produced it. But I, I swear, she didn't put it together, but she distributed it and signed it to HBO. So that's like super. You know how much Mike did for Oprah? Yeah, a lot, a lot. Bro. But that's super odd to me because I swear she put on a family, and this family came out and said, like, listen, none of you guys know this. But Mike's been a part of our kids' lives since they were like five years old. Yeah. He would literally leave to escape the whatever and just come and have Christmas with us. Bro, and that, all these that shit things. goes so deep. I've I've read like I literally like did my research research on it. Like I've I used to follow his niece and like I've all this shit I've read. Dude, Wade Robson's one of the worst people on the planet fucking earth. Like fuck that dude, bro. Like he's there's footage of his mother like explaining how Mike had the kids. I mean, first of all, the fact Mike had the kids in his fucking bedroom, to him, he's like being a big kid and watching movies. Mm -hmm. The parents would be lined up around the room watching them. In the room. There was never a kid there with no parent. Like, she explains it. Wade Robson's mother's explaining this shit in an interview. And then three years later, there's another interview where she's like, he wouldn't let us in the room. Like, changing her whole fucking story. These people are just like money-hungry fucking assholes, man. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Mike, Mike's the man. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go to the peace. deathbed with that one. Like, he's... You don't have to put that in there either. But hey. <laughs> let it ride. I mean, it's just the, the amount that people are willing to... To shit on someone else to come up. They believe a complete stranger with no credibility. You could just make something up right now. You could be like, yo, I was walking down the street today and um, fucking Hulk Hogan body slammed me. And that, someone will tweet it and the whole world believe that shit happened right now. And right. there's nothing to go to prove it wrong. Before I, g- I got out of corporate, I was working in the financial district in Boston. I got fucking fake me too'd by a chick that I started oh, man. managing. Okay, I, I'm working in Boston. I manage the team in Austin, Texas. Never even been alone with this girl once. She just literally was not doing her job. And in Skype for business, I'm writing to her. And I'm just like, you know, you, your job is inside sales rep. You got to make phone calls, send emails. Yeah. I haven't seen you done anything. Stops replying. I come in on a Monday, get called into the GM in North America's office. So and so has made a formal written complaint about you. Said Samson wants to fuck me, and because I won't fuck him, he sexually harasses me and Jesus. treats me more harshly in the worst place. That's when I was like, I'm fucking done with this life. <laughs> there is there is nothing else here. Meanwhile, my attorney's telling me best thing to do is to quit and move on. He's like, if you take this to court, eighty percent of the time, even if you're right, you're gonna ruin your career. It's funky, bro. Yeah. I, I read, I, I seen something about the kid in Connecticut, and he um girl said he raped her or some shit and then 
they can't they found text message of her saying like I had a blast last night. He got kicked out of school, kicked off the team, all that. Did not allowed back in school, and she, she was like, "Yeah, I, I, I lied." There's got to be some She's repercussions. She's like, "I lied, right? No repercussions. He didn't get back in the school. None of that." Now that being said, there's a lot of actual victims out there. Yeah, that stories get ignored but because of people because, like her. Yeah, she needs to fucking. She yeah. needs to get locked up. There's Give her a month be, in jail. And she don't be tell all the other girls not to do that. It's got to be something like a third of the time that you are uh, the your Bro, accuser would have gotten. Like I know? watch, man. And some Gibbs people, went some through that shit like, too, right? Huh? Gibbs went through that shit too, Bro, right? That's why he's locked fam, up in Germany. Yeah, check this out. Yeah. My man, I'm not going to say his name. Yeah. I sent the DM, I screenshot it and sent it to Gibbs while he was locked up over there. The girl that accused him texted my man on, on uh, IG because we were in the city the mm -hmm. week after he was there. She hit him. She's like, yeah. I partied with Freddie Gibbs last week, but he was being a dick, so I don't know. I think I'm going to like get him in trouble. Like She like wrote some shit like that, and I screenshot it and sent it to him, and he used it in court to get yeah. out of it. Fuck All yeah. these bitches are crazy. That's ridiculous. And dudes are crazy, too. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, yeah. But like, what the fuck are we talking about? Yo, he was in jail for like four or five months over there. Yeah, yeah. Could have ruined his life, and Came he bounced back. Shout out to Gibbs. Because God real. don't like ugly, man. Not at all. That's the kind of shit I'd be super interested in, like how you get Bro, through that. I remember the girl, like she was in the room with us talking mad shit. She's like, yeah, and I think she fucked one of my mans that night too. Like these girls are fucking crazy, man. Mm -hmm. You ever had a situation like uh, like Davies, Keisha, or uh, bitches from Eastwick with the locks? You ever had a situation like that? I've had shit I can't talk about. <laughs> my, my bad, but it just... I was in so one city and this girl got so fucking drunk and disappeared... The police called me and were like, yo, she, she like gave disappeared. Us, to, to dude, she FaceTimed me. She like broke into someone's house and I'm like worried sick about her because, you know, I'm a I'm a father. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I'm worried sick. I had to DJ in like an hour too. I had to go back to the hotel. I put all her shit in the um, front desk and like I was scared to death for her mm -hmm. as a father. But in the meantime, I'm like, damn, like I feel partly responsible. Cause she was hanging out with me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know two Hennessy and fucking Cokes would fucking have her acting like a zombie. And the next morning she texts me. She's like, yo, I just woke up in the police station. I just want to thank you for, for talking to the cop. I mean, I barely talked to the cop. I was like, yo, she needs to be like, she needs to spend a night in jail because yeah. otherwise who knows? She broke in some End dude's anyway. crib. Like I got crazy stories, bro. <clears throat> I just gotta be careful. <laughs> but like you, they're trying to rob you. Has that ever happened? You know, bitches from Eastwick, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Styles verse on that kills me every time. You know what? Because of so many stories like that, whenever yeah. I go on tour and you, you know, pay attention. The the times that if anyone is in the room, yeah, I hide my jewelry, all that shit, like, yeah. or I keep it on, like, even with the crib, like, you know, I got. Certain times where more people are there than it's supposed to be, it's like I keep I got a safe and all that. Like it's you got to be careful, man, because yeah. motherfuckers are grimy. So it'd be the closest one sometimes. Mm -hmm. For sure. There's still a mystery of this stolen iPod from like 2006 that my man swears this other friend of mine took, and he swears he didn't take it. He's offended that he got accused of it, but to this day, this dude thinks he took it and had all this music on it that no one will ever get back. Damn. My CD book got stolen in uh, 2002. No clue who took it. it might, I think it was like someone that was in the office in Boston that didn't work there. I think it was like a visitor. Bro, mm. it had all my beats, all my masters, like songs that just don't exist in the world now. Damn. Someone has them. <clears throat> it's crazy. My laptop got, um, I'm not going to say stolen because I'm a fucking idiot. I was in the airport in Atlanta. Jeezy flew everybody out in like 2004. He flew out like 25 DJs to come here. This is like right when he was coming out. Mm -hmm. And I was in the airport in Atlanta and I put my laptop down. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I think I was like trying to get my, my uh, bags. Mm -hmm. And I, I wouldn't say it got stolen. I like walked away and realized I didn't have my laptop. It went back and it was gone. So at that yeah. point, at that you know, if someone yeah. took it, then it's different. But um, that was a bad hit. A lot of shit that... I lost a lot of masters through the years. And and are you the I know like me, I'd be down in the dumps for months, but some people I know I they just back, it's man. all gone, you know? They just go straight back to work. Nowadays I have like three, four hard drives with a lot of the you history. Got it. And being able to back up stuff and everything like that. The iCloud's amazing, man. I got access to all my computers at any time on my phone. Shit. 
Well, listen, man, I know it's already 444. Yeah, we over. yeah, yeah, it's like a little time warp in here. Missing um, all kinds of calls. I appreciate you for coming out. Static. Thank you for coming.